read the Bible. Because I've become too much of a Bible myself. Hebrews, Hebrews, chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter 12. My specific interest is in verse number 2. But for the sake of understanding, uh, we're going to read a few verses, maybe three of them uh, from 1 to 3, so that we understand. If you are with me, say, I am following. It says, wherefore seeing we also are compassed. Is it on the screen? Uh huh. Give me verse 1. Give me verse 1. Please follow me on the screen. Hallelujah. Give me verse 1 if you can. Okay, if you can't, I, I will proceed. Therefore, since we also have such a large crowd of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight. Are you following me? It says, let us lay aside what? Every weight. And the sin that so easily ensnares us. And run with endurance. Somebody say endurance. You know, it's a quick, quick society that we are living in. It's a microwave society. You understand that? Everything microwave, quick, quick, everything. Even the, what is that name they told me? Ugali, Ugali. Even the Ugali, they want it quick now. The process has gone. They just want it now. They now call it instant Ugali. But here, the Bible says run with what? Endurance. It says run with endurance. Endurance means patience. Amen. It says there, run with endurance. The rest that lies before us. That means ahead of us there is a rest. And I think the song is here also. Uh, there is a race I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Because we need patience to run the race. It says here, it says here, it says here, the race that lies before us. So for all of us, there's a race. Don't jump into somebody's race and somebody's lane. Keep to your lane. Because your answers and your victory is within your lane. Don't even, when I'm gone, don't even try to preach like me. You're going to mess up. Just be yourself. If you walk like a duck, keep walking like a duck. I don't know if people are here today. It says running with what? With endurance, with patience. The rest that is set before you, that lies before you. There is a rest. Amen? There is a rest. Now, verse 2, that's, that's, that's where the issue begins. It says in verse number 2, if you can go with me, in verse number 2, is verse 2 there yet? Is verse 2 there? It's there. It says, looking unto the ancestors of Kenya. Am I reading wrong here? That means South African English are too different. Looking unto the president Uhuru. Of Kenya. Is that, is that what it says? How come sometimes we go crying to people? We go crying, my uncle this, my auntie this, my father this, my what? Today we want to change your focus. So that you don't focus on people, but you begin to focus on the correct place where you're supposed to focus. That's why we are so frustrated. That's why we are living in pain. Because we are always blaming somebody. Let me tell you this. Where you were born is not your problem. You were not there. But where you will die is your problem. Did you hear what I said? Where you were born is not your problem. If you were born in a manger, that's none of your business. But where you are going to die because there is a race that you have to run. If you're going to die in a manger, it's your problem. Look at your neighbor and say, it's your problem. It's your problem. We have a race in front of us. It says here, looking unto who? Jesus. Don't look to different things. You're looking to government. That's why 
Reverend Grace Mothiga, we want a paradigm shift in the church of Jesus Christ. So that people stop looking at other people. Like she was re-echoing the words that we used the other day. You know they've been calling us non-profit. One day I went into the mirror and I said, you who is in the mirror, you are non-profit? You amount to nothing? You guy, answer me in the mirror. And I got so upset and I said, no, I'm going to get the money and I'm going to get what has to be gotten so that I am relevant. Right now we are feeding the poor. We are clothing the poor. We are doing what we have to do because we are not non-profit. We have to put profit. We are taking people to universities. They are getting educated. How can they call me non-profit? And I'm happy to apply. Give me some money because I'm non-profit. The devil is a liar together with his mother-in-law. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? It says here, looking where unto Jesus. And what does it say? The author. In fact, for you to be written, it was the finger of Jesus that wrote you. It's not your mother. Your mother was just the intermediary, the midwife, who is supposed to be the channel for you to be born. You know, you have nothing to do with your mother. Hallelujah. You are you now. You are on the stage of life. And you are the one to run the rest. It's enough of depending on other people. Hallelujah. It says, it says looking unto Jesus, the author, and when he authored, he didn't leave it halfway. He completed you. The way you are, you are finished. You have the ability to do greater things than you can ever imagine. In you, you are wired to win. You are wired to be successful. You hear what I said? You are wired to be successful. You know, the, the author, and he didn't end there, and he finished. And he put faith in us. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. You need to have faith, my friend. With whatever you are doing, life is about faith. I got education, not because I had money, but I had faith. I had faith to say, I'll write exams. I will do what I have to do by faith. I don't know if you're following what I'm saying today. Faith is the answer to your success. Let's, let's move on. I have a lot of things to say here. Uh, uh, who now, now, there comes, you know, uh, 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 issues. It says here, who, and that's, the, that's Jesus, eh? that's Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What, what are we talking about here? Who for the joy that was set before him now, there's a cross, there's joy. These two don't seem to make sense, isn't it? Because we are talking about the cross. It's a place of pain. It's a place of pain. It's a place of death. But again, the writer of Hebrews says, for the joy. How can joy and cross be on the same sentence? What's going on here? But let's Let's, let's break it up. Let's break it up so that when we get out of here, we will run the race and we will know that we are profitable, that, that nobody can despise us. I don't care whether they have divorced you. They will see what God is able to do. I don't care what they have done in your life. They will see what God is able to do. It says, who for the joy that was set before him. Now look very carefully. I want you to be looking here. Here, here let's imagine this beautiful flower here is the joy that is set before. Set before means there is the before. In front, ahead. But there's a problem. This is the joy that we all dream about. That beautiful car. Not the cars that, you know, you start, the first thing you see is smoke before the sound. Not the, the bed where when you sleep on the bed, Sunday morning you have to go for prayer. You know, pastors, some of these people we are praying for, 
It's not sickness. It's the bed at home. How can a person come here, please pray for me here? It's painful. It's very painful. Go check your bed because there are stones under there. But God is changing things. There's joy here. The beautiful things of life are here. God puts them here, but look at what God does. These things are yours. Listen very carefully. These things are yours, but this is what God does. He pulls you away from this thing and brings you far from your joy. And guess what? In the middle, there's a cross. In the middle, there is that very rude uncle who is making your life a misery. The teacher in school who is always telling you you cannot go to anything, you, you cannot amount to anything. Here in the middle, look, the joy is there, isn't it? But in the middle, there is a roadblock. And that is where the Bible says, run with endurance. Paul even says it in another way. He says, fight the good fight of faith. You know why? Because Paul has seen the joy that you need. These things are yours, but they are not yet in your hands. You are here looking at the joy. You know, most of you dream nice things. Me, I don't have good dreams. When I dream, I dream cartoons. Because I watch a lot of cartoons. You know, cartoons make sense more than these movies of yours. Because in the cartoon world, there's nothing impossible. You can bring a caterpillar and go over the cartoon. Wah! He will shake himself and still wake up. I love that. The cartoon world is a world of impossibilities. And so, me, when you tell me dream, I'll dream cartoon. Are you hearing me? Speedy Gonzalez. All those cartoons, I'll dream them. But some of you dream things. Some of you have dreamt money and you're about to touch the money, you wake up. <laughs> you know, for the joy mm, that was set before him, there's a cross. He's there. There's a cross. You want to become successful in your education. There is money to be paid and there is no money. But the joy is there. You want to dress properly. There is no money to buy a good dress. But the joy has been prepared already. Let's establish something here. We must know that for every one of us, one by one, that are seated here, there is something God has planned for your life. In other words, God is not confused about you. He knows where you have to end up. But you know what? Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. One of the missing ingredients in the church is that people have become lazy. They think a small prayer meeting will bring their blessings. A small pr prayer meeting will bring their victory. Prayer is good. Never stop praying. But prayer is not the, uh, the end of the story. There is more to prayer. In fact, we always say, after prayer, then what? Hallelujah. Because if after prayer, yours is to go to bed to sleep, poverty is knocking on your door with your prayer on your side. Because after prayer, there must be something tangible that you must do. He says, I will bless the works of your hand. He didn't say, I will bless the works of your prayer. I, he says, the works of your hand. What you touch, it turns into gold. Because why? The blessing of God is there. And that all is because you have to hit the target. Listen, all of us must be wealthy. Listen, all of us must have the basic requirements. We have to have. But if you see that years are going, nothing is happening. It's because sometimes we are just praying. We are not touching anything. I declare to those that are working hard 
even if your business has failed, you know, once, twice, or three times, keep trying, keep moving. Because the reason why it has not yet worked is because you haven't yet hit the target. So if you stop, you will never hit the target. You have, you have to keep aiming. You have to keep trying. You have to keep shooting until you hit the target. My God. He says, for the joy that was set before him, he had to endure the cross. Remember, this man is about to go and sit on the right hand of power. This man, Jesus, he has to. But before that, there's a cross. He has to endure the cross. And every one of us have a cross to carry. That's why the Bible says, bear your own cross. Carry your own cross. You know, learn to know that this is my cross. I will carry it no matter what they say about me. No matter what they do to me. I will bear my cross until I get to the other side. Remember, there is another side. Hallelujah. It says, who for the joy. And I love that because there is joy. You are fighting for a purpose. Let me, let me say this so that I can finish this thing quickly. You know, battles of life are real. Battles of life. There's nothing like because you are born again. In fact, those of you that are, are, are preaching the word, you are, you are doing the ke, ke, ke russo and you are announcing the word. Don't go tell people and say, when you give your life to Jesus, problems are finished. Uh, when you receive Jesus, that's when problems arrive. To persecute you. To torment you. But you know, that's why the Bible says, be of good courage. When you give your life, when I gave my life to Jesus, they told me to change my surname. Hello? I said, get out of here. You poor guy. You know, going to try and get married. They said, get out of here. Because why? I gave my life to Jesus. When we give our lives to Jesus, then war begins. Challenges of life begin. Why many people turn back and they say, oh, when I, before I gave my life to Jesus, everything was fine. My fridge was full. My this was okay. My car was not breaking down. Yes, welcome to the team of warriors who fight their way to joy. Hallelujah. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? Battles of life are real. And I believe most of us, if not all of us, are fighting certain battles in our lives. It must be a madman who just wakes up and starts fighting for nothing. When I was in school, our school, high school was very poor. So we didn't have enough desks and chairs. So you have to go quickly to class for you to sit. Otherwise, if you are not in class early, you sit on the floor. And, that, that, and one day I arrived and there was only one desk and chair remaining and another guy arrived. So he held that side, I held this side. And we started tussling for the table because we both want to sit. And then the captain says, very funny captain. He says, okay, leave the table. Let's go to the field. You two must fight. I won't tell you who won. I won't tell you, but if, you, if we go outside, you give me 100 shilling, I'll tell you. <laughs> and the one who won that fight sat on the table for that day. It must be a madman who just wakes up and starts fighting. Fights are for a reason. When you want to fight, there is a reason. That's why Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. Because there's a reason why you need to fight that good fight. You must be mad to fight for nothing. You know why we fight? Because, because to achieve certain things in life, it's only war that answers the question. You have to fight. The children of Israel were taught to fight. Fight. The people along your way fight. Even when they reached where they're supposed to go, spies had to be sent in. 
and, and, and the spies came back and they said, hey, we have found giants. Even if we try, we are not able. It had to take people with vision, people with tenacity. It had to take two guys who said, hey, keep quiet, man. Because these guys were saying, in their, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. I believe these two were saying, so what? Even if I'm a grasshopper, I can hope. Don't look at people's sizes and you, you know. In fact, I love, listen, I love big problems. It's quiet in the house. You know why I love big problems? Because big problems are visible. How can you miss Goliath? How? If it was a pygmy, a short one, you'd be scared. But how can you miss Goliath? You just say, oh, oh, you. Those of you with big problems. Because you can see the problem clearly. The difficult guys are the small ones. You know, like, like Solomon in Songs of Solomon. I believe it's chapter 2, verse 15. He says, catch me those foxes. The foxes that ruin the vine. Because foxes, you can't see it. You can't see. You just see your vines are drying up. Because the fox is a dangerous thing. But big problems are easy to fight. Thank God for big problems. I've had big problems in my life. And I have defeated them one by one. And still defeating them one by one. How they are visible to see. Worry about small ones. Pray hard about small ones. Because those ones, you can't see how they are entering. Whether they are coming from the back or from the front. But the big one, even if he's at the back, you will hear boom, boom, boom. And you know, ah, there comes a problem. I say, what do you want? What's your problem? So, ladies and gentlemen, why do we fight? We fight because some things that you want right now are in the hands of someone else. The land that was flowing with milk and honey was not empty. There were people there. But God had designed it for his people. Not for those guys. Some of you have not been promoted for 5, 10, 16 years. I declare here today that your promotion will come. Because somebody is holding on to your promotion. Those of you that are doing business, you know, people are not coming into your shop. People are not coming to buy from you. And you are getting discouraged and discouraged. Something and someone is holding on to your blessing. The way to go is fight. And we are here to fight the good fight of faith. So that your business can be open for everyone to see. You know, Reverend Mothiga, we started Christian Faith Ministries in Pretoria, South Africa. And uh, uh, we started growing. And unfortunately, at one stage, no one was coming to church. No new people. You know, you get worried when there's no new person coming. And uh, 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 what you want to see in a church is new people showing up. It, it brings a good aroma to the church when new people come. And there was nobody coming to the church. And we decided, no, we are going to go into intense prayer and fasting because this is not normal. We were doing outreaches. We would go out for outreach. We preach. We, we, we uh, 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 announce the gospel out there. And nobody comes. And we started praying. We started praying. Real story. This is a real story. And when we were praying, God opened my eyes. And God said, we need to go and open the gate. I said, God, what are you talking about? You, you know sometimes with the way God talks. Eh? Go open the gate. The gate is wide open, but God wants me to go open the gate. So we prayed. I just walked to the gate and we, it was a Sunday morning before service. It was intercession. Went to the gate and I began to touch the, 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 the two uh, 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 pillars of the gate. And I started to pray and I went back in. Guess what? That day, 30 people walked in. 30 people walked in. And I'm saying, God, what is happening? 
Then the, the people, one of them that walked in, very vibrant young man, he comes, he says, Pastor, what happened here? We always hear you singing. Me, I have come here more than four times to try and come into your church, but I never saw the gate. I never saw the entrance. When did you open that gate? The devil is a liar, together with his mother-in-law. Amen? And then I said, the gate has been opened. He says, no. The other day, I went around this building, and yet I'm hearing people singing inside. But I'm going around this building, and nobody, no, no, no gate, there was no entrance here. And we were saying, how do these people get in? Those are the tricks of the enemy. And that's why we need to fight. There's a joy set before us. And, and, and another one stood up and said, it's true. Me, I've tried. I even went to another church far. Because I was trying to come in. And you people always close the gate. But by the power and the finger of God, the gate opened and we started growing like crazy. Did you hear what I said? Never take anything for granted. We are here for war. For the joy that is set before us. The Bible is very clear that we have to. We have to fight. Because there is a cross in between. Those things that you are going through right now. That's the cross that you have to fight. You have to go through that cross. That is why this teaching I dedicated to the people. Those who have labored without success. I've dedicated this to you because I know that henceforth there is going to be a breakthrough. There is going to be a breakthrough. Hallelujah. I've dedicated it to those who have been left alone in this world. You are all alone. You have no one to depend on. I've been there. I know what it feels. Hallelujah. We know that God is going to get you to the other side. You know, even to the pastors, in case you are following us online today, I'm dedicating this to you. Pastors who have been abandoned by their own people. People that they loved dearly. They've been abandoned. We dedicate this to them. To the widows and the orphans that are, are left alone. We dedicate this to them. Because there is a joy that is set before them. And they will go there. Hallelujah. Even to those that are fighting what is called chronic sicknesses. We dedicate this. Because we know that God is the healer. God is the healer. I am here to declare that the game is not over. No matter what you are going through, the game is not over. There is a crown that you have to inherit. There is a joy that you have to inherit. Finances, you have to inherit them. If they are human beings, and that's one of the things I said to myself. I said, if some of these guys who are so wealthy, like they are just human beings like I am. Blood, same blood. Some of their blood is even dirty. Mine is clean. So, eh, And they are are making it in life. I said, no, there must be something. There must be a change in how we are doing these things. Hallelujah. So there's a crown for the the pastors. There's a crown for a church to be full if you want it full. Because some pastors don't have to pray for a church to be full because they don't know how to pastor. Let them pastor the five people. Hallelujah. The question, ladies and gentlemen, is how do we get there to that joy, to your blessing? You've prayed for marriage. It's there. You want that girl to marry. It's there. You want that man to marry. It's there. You want, what is it that you are looking for? It's there. But how do we get there? That's the question. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It's very unfortunate that many want that, but they don't want this. Did you hear what I'm saying? They want that. In fact, it has become a church of abracadabra. You know that, eh? Magic. You want pa, receive. It's yours. I I think if that's what came for to uh, a Caruso revolution, please walk out. I think the matatu, is it matatu, the buses? They are still moving. You can jump on your matatu and go home. Because here, we are here for serious business. 
And the business we are here for is that when we get to the crown, even the people in the area will say, how did you do it? How did you make it? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that, that, that there's a crown ahead of you. You are not going to die the same way you are unless you are lazy. There has to be a change in the, thing, the way things are going to be done. Some of you even say, no, my, my family was poor. My grandmother was poor. My father was poor. When did you become your grandmother? Because I think you are you. You are not your grandmother, neither are you your mother. Hallelujah. You are not. If your father did not leave you anything, not even a teaspoon, it's not you. You are not your father. You will leave an inheritance for your children and for your children's children. So I declare and so I speak in the name of Jesus that you will leave an inheritance for the people. Even if you are a woman, don't say I'm just a woman and sing those rubbish songs of I'm just a woman. You are not just a woman. You are a powerful woman. You are made in the image of God and God will take you to the other side even men will come and say how did you do it did you hear what I'm saying they'll come and say how did you do it there's no question about it because God has given you wisdom unless you tell me you don't have five senses you have three we all are equal in the eyes of God and God is able to use us Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I want you to understand, friends, that there's no quick fixes in this thing. We need to work the process. Amen? We need to work the process. This is not an abracadabra thing. I want you to know that when you see genuine millionaires, they've gone through processes. We tell young people and say, don't see us preach like this and you think, you know, it started today. It's been years of pain, years of groaning, years of prayer. Many times we never slept. We slept on the stages of churches just to pray that God will answer and, and, and all that kind of thing. It's not magic. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You, you know, some of you don't even envy some of the preachers you see because you don't know what they have gone through. You say, ah, I want to be like that one. Are you sure? Are you able to bear what he bore in his life and ministry? <laughs> Hallelujah. Even Jesus Christ, at one time it was so heavy that he had to say, Lord, let this cup pass. It was too heavy. He says, let it pass. Nevertheless, only your will must prevail. And I know there are many that would be praying today, Lord, let this pass from me. It's a very lonely road to the crown. Hallelujah. Many battles are to be fought for us to get to where we have to be. Now, let me try to finish this by saying these words. Look at David. There was an army, powerful army, led by the man Saul. Goliath started standing up there and insulting and cursing the people of God. He says, give me a man. He was very strategic. He wanted to destroy and squish, squeeze some bones. He said, give me a man. You cowards. And they will go down. They will go down. They will be so scared and terrified. Until this young, rudy looking boy arrived in the soldier's camp with a, 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 a food tin in his hands. And, and he just saw everyone going down. And as he was trying to go down, he says, what's happening? What is going on? He says, sit down. People will tell you to sit down. But I want you to know your God. I want you to know who you are. He says, sit down. Stop talking here. And the brothers even says, we know you. That is to show you that the most dangerous people who will make you not to succeed are your own brothers and sisters, your friends, the people who are near you. 
be careful of those people. Because they think they know you too much that you cannot. Because you see, they are the ones who have heard you snoring at night. They've seen you stealing, you know, a, a bread in the in the evening. You know, drinking your father's milk. They know you, so they think you cannot amount to anything. So David, instead of the whole team saying, "Okay, let's attack this Goliath," David says, "Aha! Who is this guy?" And, uh, and, and one thing led to the other. He was in the office of Mr. Saul, the captain. And, uh, and, and he says, no, you know, boss, I, 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 I have handled a lion before. And I've handled a bear before. And, and what I'm seeing there is another animal which I'm going to deal with. He says, okay, put on, put on my, my fighting clothes because they were trusted. And David, for the sake of respect, he puts them on. And tries, and, uh, and he says, I cannot try. That is to show you that don't try to be someone else. Your anointing is your anointing. Don't try to be what you are not. You are you and remain you. You can fight as you are. And David says, I, I, I have tried it. You've seen me trying it. But let me go the way I know how. And David began to go. He went and he got some stones uh, from the brook. He Got how many stones did he get there? Five smooth stones. He got them and, and uh, you know, the catapults. And in those days, they used to swing them. And he got those catapults. And uh, have you ever asked yourself a question, why the five stones? Why did he just take one? Because he knew he was going to, uh, 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 to kill with one. But you must know, when you read the Bible, you will find that Goliath had four other brothers. So David had a, a plan. He had plan B. Are you hearing that? David knew that, ah, okay, uh, uh, if, if I drop this guy and the other brother comes, I have another stone for him. If the other brother comes, I have another stone for him. I'm going to deal with this family until they are wiped off the face of the earth. Who are they to insult the anointed ones of God? And he swung that stone. And, and, and some of you, perhaps this is what I'll deal with uh, uh, more on Sunday. Some of you think it was just a little game. But you know what? When you look at the Bible, when you look at the scripture, Jesus is referred to as the son of David. No, people are not hearing me. People are sleeping. Please stand up once and sit down. Stand up once so that you hear. This is very important. This is crucial. Because, because sometimes we read the Bible and we don't read it the way it's supposed to be read. Hallelujah. Please sit down. David, when you see, what, what, does, what does the blind man say in the New Testament? The blind Bartimaeus. He says, Jesus, son of David. And when you go to scripture, it is David, 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 David. Now, the devil being who he is, he saw on that day that, that today is David. I do not believe it was just the father who sent David to the battle. I think the devil was pushing David to go to that battle so that David can be killed. And when David arrived there, oh, who is this guy? I, I'm, going to, I'm going to deal with him. And, and, and when David was swinging that stone, you have to know that blind Bartimaeus was in his mind. When David was swinging that stone, Kenya was in his mind. Now that stone, listen, that stone had to hit the target. Otherwise, we are in trouble. We are talking about Jesus being the son of David. So Jesus comes out of the loins of David. So no David, no Jesus. If there is no... Who, who speaks... This is, is this a Swahili area? We speak Swahili here. Huh? You speak Swahili? Say, no Jesus, no David, no Jesus in Kiswahili. Huh? Did you see here? Bila Daudi, apana Jesu. Did you hear what I'm saying? 
So the devil planned to kill David so that Jesus will not be born. And if Jesus is not born, where are we? This church cannot exist because there is no Jesus. So there was, there was a war in the spirit about this David. And that is why that stone must go directly to the target. You know the angels, I believe, would stand up in the heaven and would cheer David. And the angels would hold back the wind because remember, when that stone is released, there must be no wind to take it away. That was, it was a very strong moment in the history of mankind. We'll deal with that at another time. But ladies and gentlemen, there is a crown. There is a joy ahead of us. How do we get to the joy? How do we get to that crown? Number one, you need to know and see what you are fighting for. What is it you want in life? You know, don't just fight anyhow. What do you want to be? What do you want to become? So the first thing I encourage you is to know what you are fighting for. When I was fighting for that desk in class, I knew exactly what I was fighting for so that I can sit comfortably for eight hours in the class. We used to have long classes. So the first thing is know what you're fighting for. See what you want, then fight. Did you hear what I said? If it's worth it, then fight. Hallelujah. Number two, how do you get to the crown? How do you get there? How do you overcome the cross? Engage yourself in repeated encounters with God. Talk to your God. He's your father. Hallelujah. Let me tell you that once a week is not enough. Just going to church once a week is not enough. This thing is not a religion. This thing is a lifestyle. It's a relationship with God. It's a relationship. Number three, you know, the way to get to that joy, engage yourself in extreme hard work. Be a workaholic. Work hard. Hallelujah. After prayer, we ask the question, then what? We need to do something. The rewards will show in the dressing, in the driving, in the way you live, in your wallet, the results will show. Hallelujah. Even your prayer will change from complaining to victory. You know, most of the prayers is complaining. Huh? We are always complaining in prayer. But your prayers will change to prayers of victory. Because why? You are engaging in extreme prayer. And then engage yourself in fasting. Engage yourself in extreme worship. See, when it comes to worship, don't play around. Worship God. Engage yourself in teamwork. Work with people of like mind. No matter what you are going through. Keep fighting and keep moving on. It was one man that said that if you cannot fly, you need to run. Did you hear that? You need to run, but if you cannot run, you need to walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. But by all means, keep on moving. What slows us down or what keeps us out of the game is that many times we get discouraged and we stop. How many people have stopped singing in the choir just because some little boy insulted them? And then they stopped. Oh, I won't even go there. How many have stopped going to church just because somebody says something about their dress or shirt or, or tie? And they stopped going to church. I want you to have tenacity. I want you to know that when, you, when, when they insult you, it's better. Then they will see the hand of God. As I preach to you, I preach to me because I know what God has taken me through from one place to the other. Nobody ever thought I can go around the world and preach the gospel. Nobody ever thought that. Whilst you are praying and fasting for a visa to go to America, I've passed to that stage. 
And the reason you didn't say amen is jealousy. There is nothing else. You understand? Whilst you are praying and believing God for the next car, I have passed that stage. I, I don't know if you are hearing me. I am saying this to show you that you are coming. Your joy is set before you. Whilst you are believing and fasting, oh God, give me a house, a house of my own, I have passed that stage. No hand claps. Jealousy. I want you to understand that keep on moving because your blessing is there. Keep on fighting these forces. Keep on fighting the cross until you get to your point where you will stand and say, I believe God is able. As I stand with you today, I know that God is able. He cannot fail. I know beyond any shadow of doubt that there's been years and years of struggle. Years of struggle. But God can never fail. Can you stand upon your feet and I will pray with you and so that we allow the program to keep on going and we talk at another time. I hope somebody is blessed this evening. Is there anybody blessed this evening? Can you see your future? For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Can you please lift up your right hand to God and say these words. Say, dear Lord in heaven, I thank you tonight that you love me so much. You are giving me power and authority to endure the cross. All the things, my father, that are hindering me. You are my God. You are helping me to overcome them. In Jesus' name, I am a winner. I am a conqueror. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a mighty hand of praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. That was powerful. Come on, somebody appreciate our bishop. Appreciate our bishop, the man of God. He has blessed us. Come on, somebody appreciate Bishop Musepa all the way from South Africa. Come on, church, I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Wow, tell your neighbor, wow. And if your neighbor is not talking, I give you a chance to find a talking neighbor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is your neighbor talking? Is your neighbor in the church? Is your neighbor ready to church? Is your neighbor in Caruso? And if your neighbor is not even smiling, Muambie, serious deliverance on you now. Hallelujah. Once again, we want to appreciate the women, the women of God in the house, the men of God in the house. Come on, church. Come on, church. Appreciate them. Yesterday, I said something. The anointing you appreciate spices up your life. Hallelujah. Some people have not traveled because the anointing upon your bishop, you're not, you're not even appreciating it. So when I am saying appreciate the man of God, you are there shaking your head religiously, looking at me and wondering, am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. Amen. Do you want to go to South Africa? Yes. Do you want to come to Uganda? Yes. Now let us appreciate the men and the women of God in the house. Hallelujah. Wow. Now, we are going into praise again. Hallelujah. But before that, I want you to get hold of your offering. Hallelujah. Uh -uh. Get, of your, get hold of your offering. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. I want to appreciate the woman of God, Pastor Julie. Come on, appreciate this woman of God. Uh uh. I want you to appreciate this powerful, powerful woman of God. Hey, and she's a serious, serious musician. If you listen to her, hey, hey. Well, she's just about to come and say hi to you. Hallelujah. We are so happy to see you, woman of God. Thank you for having some time just to come and, and uh, you know, Caruso with us. We are serious in doing Caruso. Amen. Now, I want you to get hold of your offering. The ushers, please kindly help me and give out the envelopes as I have the worship team, the band getting ready, and everybody. Amen. If you don't have an envelope. I need my phone. Amen. Even the choir, we give. Amen. So if you're in the choir, you don't have your offering, please get an envelope. We, ha we, we also give via M-Pesa. Amen. 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 If you're giving via M-Pesa, I want to give you our till number. Are we together? Our till number is 566 71 and 47. Five six six seven one four seven. If you're watching online, our team numbers are on your screen. We encourage you to partner with us in the name of Jesus, and the Lord is going to bless you mightily, mightily in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now I want you to lift up your offering, your tithe, your seed for Caruso Revolution. It has taken money for this conference to happen. Are we together? Now, I want you to give your very best. Amen. Hallelujah. Our bishop said yesterday that it is a high time that the church arises economically. But it only happens to a man and a woman who has learned how to give. Amen. When you give, you receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's lift up your offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I speak a blessing Upon every man, every woman, every child, those watching online, as they choose to partner with the work of the kingdom of God, I pray that there will be an overflowing of grace, of blessing, of favor, a lifting in the name of Jesus Christ. Where there has been a casting down, there is a lifting down. There is a lifting up in Jesus' mighty name. And let me hear somebody say, Amen. Uh, uh, let me hear somebody say, Amen. Amen. Let me hear the church say, Amen. 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 Uh -uh. Is your neighbor sleeping? Now, for those who are new in our ministry, in our church, this is where we place you, our offerings kindly. Just walk and uh, put inside there your offering, your envelopes, and the Lord is, is going to bless you. Amen. Now, are you ready to go into praise and worship? Uh -uh, you are not ready. Is somebody ready? Yes. Is somebody ready? Yes. Uh -uh. Is somebody ready? Yes. If your neighbor is still seated, Muambie si mama. Hallelujah. We are going into a session of praise and worship for the next 20 minutes. Powerful praise, powerful worship. Until the demons of Kirigiti cannot stay again. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now there are some witches, wizards, who are busy working. But for us here, we are ready to proclaim. We are ready to caruso. That that name of Jesus is lifted up in Kirigiti. That name of Jesus is lifted up in Kiamu. Amen. That name of Jesus is lifted up up to all the nations hallelujah amen. amen amen i want to welcome the man of god thank you karibu sana come on somebody appreciate the man of god hallelujah amen. come on church appreciate the man of god as he's coming come on appreciate him
before before I before we get into this mighty ride, would you just help me appreciate our mom? Rev Reverend Grace. Um, I received the extension from the man of God here. He's a very good friend of mine. And I love this house. And Jesus is here. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you know, when Jesus is around, nothing remains the same. Praise the Lord. Would you just help me appreciate our mom again? Uh, my name, my, I did not introduce myself. My name is David Kiarie. I love the Lord. I'm born again. I'm one of the pastors in Life Church, Kasarani. Uh, and I come bearing greetings from our father there. Do you receive them? Amen. Uh, and I also did not come alone. I came with people that you minister with. That is Patience right there. Just wave. Appreciate her. Uyo ni muchomi. Ambia jirani yako muchomi. Kuna jina tunatumianga huko. Naituwa muchomi. Mtu wa kuchoma. Fire people. They, they are full of the fire of God. When they appear, the fire of God appears. <laughs> Amen. And we have John right there. Just help me appreciate him. Yeah. Help me appreciate the wonderful praise and worship team. And the band. Amen. Can we praise God? Can we magnify the name of Jesus? Amen. Are you ready? Jehovah, can you take it a little bit higher? You high Jehovah, you high Milele, Mataifa, Tumsifu, Yesu, you high. Let me do this. Allow me to do this. Uh, help me appreciate our bishop. Appreciate better. Uh, have me also appreciate the man of God. Prophet. Amen. It is such a such a, such a great honor to stand before great men of God and and mom there, pastor. Amen. I have me appreciate her. You know, I am a firm believer when the grace of God appears. Eh, you have to rejoice. Amen. So one of the reasons why you don't take men for granted is because they are carriers of graces. Tell your neighbor, carriers of graces. Eh, and the, we have those people in the house. Help me appreciate these wonderful men and women of God. Amen. Amen. Now lift your hands up high. Put your hands up high. Flower, 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 flower. Flower, flower. Move around and flower, 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 flower. Move around and shout, 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 shout. Shout to God. Shout unto Jesus. Someone, somebody move around and shout Jesus. 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 Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Are you ready? Come on, put your hands like this. Come on. Wapi shangwe na deremo. Can we can we take Bishop to Kenya a little bit? We, we teach him a little bit of Kenyan music. Is that all right? Are you ready? Are you ready? Aya, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Hey, you hide the over. I Jehovah, you hide me, Lele. Mataifa, Mataifa, Tumsifu, yes, so you hide. You hide the whole, you hide Jehovah. You hide me, Lele. Mataifa, Mataifa. Yes, who you are. Yeah. I'm 
nimeshinda kifo na kaburi Yesu you hai mataifa tumsipo Yesu you hai eh anarudi tena akiwa na nguvu na mamlaka mataifa tumsipo Yesu you hai nasema you hai you hai Jehovah hey. Wave your hand. You Wave. are my lele. Mataifa. Mataifa. Hey. Tusifu. Yes, One more time. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are Jehovah. Hey. You are my lele. Mataifa. Mataifa. Hey. Tusifu. Yes, you are. Kati ya miungu hakuna mungu kama we Mungu kama wewe Kati kati ya mabwana hakuna bwana kama we Bwana kama wewe Kati kati ya wafalme hakuna mfalme kama we Mfalme kama wewe Kati kati ya wabwana hakuna bwana your handkerchief take something and declare that there is no god like jehovah are you ready and i want and i want two three come on wapi shangwe na nderemo shangwe na nderemo kwa yesu celebrate jesus celebrate jesus Ah, do like this, do like this. Come on. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Do like this, do like this. Hey. One more time. Hey, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Shangilia Yesu, shangilia Yesu. Shangilia Yesu, shangilia Yesu. Shangilia, 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 shangilia. Shangilia Yesu, shangilia. Ametenda maku, maku. Ametenda maku. Maku, I'm a tender maku. Maku, tender maku. Maku, wana wama bon, wamo cheshi. I'm a tender maku. I'm a tender maku. Maku. Shangilia Yesu, Shangilia Yesu. Shangilia Yesu, Shangilia. Shangilia, 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 Yesu, Shangilia, Yesu, Shangilia, 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 Yesu, Shangilia, Yesu, Shangilia, 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 Yesu, Shangilia, Yesu. I'm a tender maku, maku, maku. Maku, eh, I'm a tender maku, eh, 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 maku, e
aku eh, ada tenda aku eh, 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 bana wama bana eh, wama jesh eh, wapi shangwe eh, nandere makoye Somebody dance to Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody give praise to Jesus. Yes. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? Jesus, yeah, you're the name above every eye. Hey, what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? Jesus, somebody joke around and shout. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody shout to the Lord. Yeah. Creator, 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 creator of the universe. What can you do? What can't you do? What can't you do? What can't you do? What can't you do? Hey. Jesus. You're the name above every other. Name above every other name. Hey, hey. What can't you do? What can't you do? What can't you do? Can you do? Jesus. One more time. Creator, creator. Are you ready to declare? What can you say? Somebody proclaim. You are a, you are a, hey, 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 Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. 
somebody pray in the Holy Ghost there is nothing he cannot do nothing he cannot change Rakapala Parabasanda La Prekatali Barada Baba La Parada Baba Basai Oh Hallelujah Hallelujah Yeah Baba Da Baba Da Baba Oh Hallelujah Oh Hallelujah Oh Glory to God Oh Ramasanda, oh Menena, Mwenyewe, Hallelujah, to Taishi, to Kita Zahan, eh, oh Menena, Mwenyewe, Hallelujah, oh, to Taishi, to Kita. Lift your hands to the Lord. Tazama, Tazama, Hey, Jesus, come Tazama, Jesus, Amen, Nana, Amen, Nana, Amen, Nana. Jesus, Tazama, hey, Ishisa, come Tazama, come Tazama, Jesus, Amen, 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 Pacatala Parada Tazama 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 Ishi Sasa O Kunta Zama Yesu Amenena Mwenyewe Hallelujah O La Paria Masanda La Paya Lo Prakapali Baradi Asanda Zalamandala Oh hallelujah tonight he knew I'm gonna yet to kiss my way one got to walk over kutoka mautini eh tunasema tunasema eh one tunakiri Oh, what 
Watosha 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 Yesu unatosha Watosha Lift up those hands Watosha Lift up those hands, lift up those hands Watosha Raise those hands to Jesus Watosha 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 Watosha
fire and lift it up. Sing, here's the name. Here's the name. Let me see some believers in this house Begin to live the name of Jesus Begin to live the name of Jesus Worship, 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 worship Worship, worship, worship Don't be spectators Be participators one more time, take it deeper. Take it deeper. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Surrender. 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 And our hearts will sing how great is our God. It comes from your heart. Mm. Mm. Worship is not a song. It's a nature. Yeah, and my heart will sing. How great. Because he searches the deeper things of a man's heart. So if he cannot find himself in you, then the melodies you produce may not render any effect. So let this come from the deepest part of your heart. Hey, hey, hey. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Hey, I then sings my soul, my Savior God. To thee. If you know, he deserves it. How great Let me hear the worshipers in this building sing how great. the machines then sings then sings my soul let it flow my Savior God tell him this evening tell him tell him tell him how great the he wants to hear you revere him he loves to be reverenced Great 
Let the confession of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be true. My Savior, how great, how great Thou art. how great So if you know him to be great, give him a shout and an offering of praise. If you know him, now that is for your neighbor. Give King Jesus a shout. Yeah. Come on. Worship him with that sacrifice of praise. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the sacrifice. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Rida Bahadebo Sataya. One thing I believe truly, you cannot come in here the same and leave the same. Now that amen I think was for the people for Uganda. You cannot come here the same and leave the same. That is still weak. That is not for people that ex want to experience a shift and a change. You cannot come in here the same and leave the same. Amen. We refuse to go back the way we came. There's a song that says, I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. You hear that? I won't go back, I can't go back to the way you Come on, declare it. Before your presence and If you want that shift, say I won't go back. So what you profess about yourself, that you will experience. So if you want change, God will only make it available, but you will only walk into it accessibly. You will get that later. Because it's provided, but it is left for you to choose to get into it. So not until you begin to speak it, it won't manifest for you. I don't care how many times you come to church. There is so much that can happen in your bathroom that would happen even in church. Can I get a witness? Yeah, it's just a response. A divine response into spiritual realities that a man could only walk in because he knew how. And I'm so grateful that in this room they are not young people. I mean like the babies. So I hope I'm speaking to some leaders in the house. People that say for change to happen outside there, it must happen in here. Because you cannot serve what you've never cooked. And you cannot focus on something you've never seen. Bishop said it, before you can do it, you have to set eyes on it. So before you effect change in the marketplace, effect change in your mindset. So I believe when we declare words like, I won't go back, I don't care whether it's poverty, I don't care whether it's sickness, I don't care whether it's luck, I don't care whether it's rebuke and abuse, whatever it is, my declaration settles my issue. I think 
I got some spectators. Bishop who said it. This is what we deal with. <laughs> but I believe that everyone in this room is ready and set up for an experience. Um, mm, I, ha I had one person. God, if there is nobody in this room, let it be me. The Lord said, find me one man, just one man, one man that I could use. So uh, uh, if, if you still want to be kawaida, kawaida, yeah, we say it that way, right? Kawaida, kawaida. Endelea ivo. Kato. Cheza kama wewe. No, my, 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 my guys have been teaching me Swahili down here. So Bishop, you're not alone. I, I, I've been suffering the issue. <laughs> Sometimes I say a word and they're like, hmm. Ni weke apa. What is ni weka ni weke apa? Weka ni weka apa ni weka apa. Ni weke. They ended up laughing at me. So, but by all things are possible. <laughs> Through Christ that strengthens me. <laughs> you can take your seats in the presence of God. Thank you. Let's honor God for these great ministers of the kingdom. Come on, you guys, let's bless the instrumentalists. Let's bless the worship ministry. Uh, okay. Uh, that jealousy, 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 jealousy. Look at your neighbor, jealousy, jealousy. If you can't do it, if you can't, if you can't do it, if you can't do it, Peter, I'm going to ask you to help me with this mic. Amen. If you can't do it, please give credit to the one who can. Amen. So you don't lose a tooth because you thank someone. You don't lose a tooth because you thank someone. Okay, the techno technical team is trying to figure it out. Amen. Tell your neighbor, look at them and thank them. If we gave you a microphone, you may sing off key. And finding you, you may find that even on the keyboard, the key you're singing does not exist on the scale. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So give credit to the guys that do it. Because if they gave you that cup, you will pray like Jesus, take this cup off me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let's bless the music ministry, the instrumentalists. Thank you, Jesus. When you learn to honor people, you will also be honored. When you learn to celebrate people, you will also be celebrated. Don't try to ask for something you have never deposited for. You can never go to a bank you have never saved in and start to make withdrawals. First of all, you don't have the visa card to do that. So you get. You want, you want the best. Just like love. You want to be loved? Love. You, you get it. Don't, don't expect someone to love you and you are like hard as a stone cold stone. You are so waxed to a point. Finding you feels like a brook that never produces water. Tell your neighbor, that won't be me. By the time you find me, I am filled and full. Talking like unbelievers. After such a great message from Bishop, I, I don't expect you to even be seated. Some of you should have removed your shoes. In Uganda, we find shoes inconveniencing. <laughs> Am I right, Bishop? <laughs> Why? Because you find a lady, she came looking nice. By the time it is 2 a.m., the wig is looking the other way around. What happened? You spent 50000 to fix yourself. And in one minute, you destroyed the fix. I promise you, you go back to that saloon, even the guy doesn't want to work on you. He calls you a destroyer of his work. <laughs> I pray that happens in Kenya. Amen. We need an encounter uh, from all our religious traits and beliefs. Amen. Father, we thank you for this evening. We want to thank you for the word that you have released. We thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We thank you because of what you are doing in our season and in our time. 
We are grateful and we are thankful. Our hearts are ready. We are not here that you would only challenge us, but we are here that you would change us. We are not here that you may entertain us, but that you may empower us. So, Father, let there be a shaking from the inner depth of our existence that everything you intend us to walk in and everything you want us to manifest may be true and real. In the name of Jesus and God's children say, Amen and Amen. Are we good with this microphone or we turn it off? Because we are recording, so you forgive us. We are good? Okay. Some of these things, we don't do them for swag. <laughs> because uh, in the coming future, there is a generation that will find this material. You, you see, your Okay. Oh, sorry. That scared me a bit. Amen. <laughs> your children, the Bible says a good parent leaves a, an inheritance for his children's children. So before you leave a financial inheritance, leave a spiritual inheritance. Can I get a witness? So the things we are doing, my sons, my daughters, will carry on. I'm not only teaching guys in Nairobi. I have a generation of over five kids. Amen. Yeah, I'm an old man, yet a young man. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, you should have clapped for that because... Some of you don't know the experience. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But we bless the Lord. My third born rested in glory in 2007. 2017. My third born rested and the Lord had the plan. And we are grateful. Amen. We tend, I, I have a tendency of always considering that he's still present. So sometimes I end up, ah, they're high. As a father, it's not something you deal with just over the, the night. It's something you live with. Because as a parent, you want to see your children turn out to the very thing that God intended them to turn out. Amen. Yeah, but we give God the glory. So don't pity me. Get those marks off your face. <laughs> don't, I'm seeing already people going, oh, sorry, sorry. No, don't sorry me. Because the giver of life is God. And he decides when a man and how a man can exist. Amen. We want to bless the Lord for Bishop, my father. I call him my father because <laughs> I am equally almost or above slightly <laughs> the age of his firstborn, right? Yes. So... He's a dad. Amen. Yeah. Let's bless the Lord for Bishop Samuel Moseko. <laughs> Do you know what it takes to be in 40 years of ministry? <laughs> you, you have been in ministry for two years and you're already looking for gig. <laughs> financial, financial flow is a crisis. Tell your neighbor financial flow is a crisis. So you're looking for options. <laughs> uh, so 40 years is not easy. So, man, you got to respect the people that have been there. And that's why Paul writes to Timothy and says, hey, let no one even try to bring a verdict upon the elders unless there is a weakness of two or three. Because you don't even have the right to make that kind of verdict. You, you just don't have. Accusation, wapi. Where? Okay, they may be wrong. <laughs> but look at your gap. Eh? And this is all New Testament, so it's not Old Testament. So don't think it's Old Covenant. It's New Covenant. So if it applies in the Old Covenant, it applies in the New Covenant. Amen. Uh, let's bless the Lord for Mama, the mother of the house as well. Come on, let's honor the anointing. We traveled with a team of very young, vibrant people from our church. Jesse, let everyone come stand up. Those from Revelation Word, come on. Where are all of you? Yeah. 
My administrator is out there. You've seen her, Apostle Sheila. Amen. So we traveled with a team. We wanted to come about 15 people, but it seems Kepi, is Kepi, Kepi what? Kepi Kenya, Petroleum, whatever. D decided to, to limit us. <laughs> and tell us, no, we don't allow excess. <laughs> but we would have come with a huge team. We have um, our secretary not here, our personal assistant is not here, but we traveled with the whole music ministry, not the whole, this is partly actually half of the music ministry. And the Lord has uh, established us as well in Eldoret. We've been established in Uganda. Now the Lord said, go to Eldoret and establish something. So I'm in your land. So be very careful how you handle me. <laughs> because the Bible says, if they don't receive you, do what? Dust yourself off and leave the land. And what next? It shall be upon them worse than it was on Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. So be very careful how you handle men of God, especially if they are not of your land. And regardless, even though they are of your land, they can leave your village because you pissed them off. And then you'll start worrying, wondering why you're not prosperous. The problem is you never knew how to handle the anointing. Regardless of how small, how big, there is a process they have been through that you have never been through. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how small or how big, their process to the anointing can never equate to your process. So please, you're not joking with the man. You are joking with the anointing. That's what the Bible says. Touch not the anointed. And do the prophets. No. He first starts with the anointing before the guy. So you handle the anointing wrongly, you mess up with the guy. And then God shows you what it means to touch the anointing, then touch the guy. Because the guy without the anointing, you can't touch. But the anointing on the guy, it's dangerous. So handle us with care. Let's bless the Lord for the mother of the house again. Apostle Grace Mudiga, come on. Amen. Ah, ah. And you want to be pastor someday. With people holding Bibles for you. <laughs> Yet you can't even clap. <laughs> it will be a myth. Amen. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 3. First Thessalonians chapter 3. And for those who joined us on Wednesday, we started on understanding the purpose of kingdom proclamation. And for those that watched us on live, and for those watching us now on live, you can go back to our Wednesday service and you get a reference to what we talked about or introduced. Now, our theme scripture in this conference is from Matthew 24, verse 14. Amen. First, take me there, Matthew 24, 14, so that we can give a backbone. And allow me, I challenge you, if you sleep, your feet will get cold and you will feel your freezing. Uh, <laughs> oh, you may wonder where a bed bug showed up from and distorted the sleep. Amen. But it won't happen in this house. This is holy ground. Tell your neighbor, holy ground. Amen. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Tell your neighbor, and then the end shall come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, not in some of the world. Now, if you're singing, there's a possibility that you may be singing a song that may not be preaching. <laughs> Music ministry, you're there? You're there? And because it seems today God blesses a lot with worshippers in the house. So I'm going to hit it on the nail and on the head of the nail and in the wood where the nail is entering because I hit the head of the nail. Okay. 
<laughs> and this gospel, not every gospel, there is a gospel. Tell your neighbor there is a gospel that must be preached in the ends of the age that may not look like the gospel that you had when you got saved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a possibility that what you encountered at the place of salvation was one of the gospels or one of the principles of the gospel. Okay? And believing in one principle is enough to lead you to salvation. But understanding the foundation of the gospel will lead you to redemption. Let me say that again. It is possible that you got saved by one principle of the gospel. Because the gospel of the kingdom is not an end time doctrine. It is an all time foundation of all doctrines. So you could have gotten saved by one principle. And yet it is not the ultimatum of redemption. What do I mean? The traditional gospel leads you to salvation. And, and it's so interesting that we are doing this on the, the night after the crucifixion. Now, if you agree with me, or I may be alone, I think the Easter season is quite very important than the Christmas season. Let me say that again. I think the Easter season, or we call the Passion Week, is much important than the Christmas season. Because so much happens on the Easter season than on the Christmas season. It is one thing to be born and do nothing. And it is another thing to be born and fulfill something. So if Jesus had only been born, then his existence would have been irrelevant. But his existence becomes very important because of the cross and after the cross. So when you understand the crucifixion or the Passion Week, you're living in a reality of unthought provisions. That's why you now begin to hear Paul write, you know, he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all what you could do, what? think or imagine. But you see, in the old covenant before he died, it was about what you could do. In the new covenant, it was about what he did that becomes your all. In the old covenant, it is what you did that became your sum. Because the law was about performance. The kingdom is about reality. Mm -hmm. So now uh, we are in a passion season and we're talking about the Caruso revolution. So interestingly, because God help me here. I'm trying to slow down. Amen. It's so significant because Jesus had to take on flesh so that he can afford you in spiritual possibilities. Let me say that again. Jesus had to take on a fleshly form so that you can walk in spiritual possibilities. But if you walked in physical possibilities or earthly nature, you would never even attain spiritual reality. So he turned to flesh so that you can arrive to spirituality. Now you are living to spirituality so that you can manifest spirituality to flesh. Let me... I hope I've endorsed you. Let me put it this way. When I come to you in the physical, okay, and I gift you with a gift, I showed up face to face to you so that you can have something of value from me. But if it were you coming, it is possible you would not get anything of value from me yet. Because there is no conviction in me to give you that value. So we are, Jesus is the one coming 
to give us the value because we could not get it in our own making. That's what the Bible says. All our righteousness is as filthy rugs. There is nothing you could do or purchase with your righteousness for yourself. Not until Jesus took on a physical form so that you can walk in the righteousness of God through the faith and in the faith of Christ Jesus. Now we are in the reality of Christ so that that reality may start to affect us naturally. That is why the longer you stay in the physical, the possibilities are you will never see anything spiritual. Let me use a scripture with that. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded, you got it. So this is what Jesus came to do. So he could only give you spiritual life by showing up in the body. He could do it also in the spirit. But because you had fallen short from the flesh, not from the spirit. You lost dominion from the spirit because you believed in the flesh. Now he has to come and purchase you from the side by which you got dominated by. So that now he can bring you to the place where you were before you lost it. It is unfortunate when you begin to exercise naturality, yet you are spiritual. Tell your neighbor, it's unfortunate. So we have so many people saved. So many saved. They go to church. They sing in the choir. They clean the chairs. They do ushering. Saved, not redeemed. Because salvation and redemption are two different things. Salvation is being salvaged or something being picked up from a place where it is being rendered null and void. Redemption is a response. It is not an action. Salvation is an action because it's a belief. That's why he says, they that believe, they shall be saved. But then if believing settled it, then all the world, even the Catholics, would be say, is redeemed. Okay. Mm -hmm. If everyone, that, because they believe in Jesus, do they? They do. Okay? They believe in Jesus. They believe he's the son of God. Yet one thing that is different is how you believe and what they believe. Because their salvation is judged by their performance. Your redemption is judged by your response of his salvation. That's why the Bible says, for this, the spirit that raised this Jesus, the spirit, the, it, it, your response is to what raised Jesus. Then they respond to the Jesus that was raised. I, um, and I'm not saying it is wrong. But there is another level. That is why Hebrews 6 will continue telling you, grow from the elementaries of Christ. It's not that he's not important. He is very important. But he's not the final destination. That's why even Jesus himself can say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes so before you get to the Father, first go through the door. And I am the door, but I am not the destination. Now, guys are stuck at, at door, not destination. Same letter, D. All the other letters change. You have D-O-O-R, then the other one is D-E-S. A complete distinction. So you have guys who are lost because they only answered one letter. They forgot to read that all the other letters are three and the other one has probably eight. <laughs> so this is where your redemption is distinctive from the men of the law. Because that's why the Bible now will begin to say, let the redeemed of the Lord, not the redeemed of the law, not the redeemed of the Catholic Church, not the redeemed of the Buddhists, not the redeemed of the Hindu, the redeemed of the, 
because you went through the door, you arrived at the destination, and now God can call you my redeemed. So I am responding because of my arrival. That is my authority. So, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. And for those that were here, we said the word witness is where we get the Greek word materion or the English word matcha to mean one to produce evidence or manifest the truth. Um, so, if there is proclamation, Pastor Julie, there has to be manifestation alongside proclamation. I hope I'm, I'm still in, I'm, I'm in track. Amen. We have to produce witness of what we say we know. And it must be effective to all ethnos or ethnic groups. Nation, ethnos. Amen. To mean ethnic groups. And I said on Wednesday, the moment you received Christ in your life, you became another ethnicity. You may be Mkamba, Muluya, Mjaluo, Kikuyu, I don't know which other, Mutrukana, Muteso, Masai, I don't care. The moment you walked into the door, Something happened that could not look like the culture your father birthed you through. So regardless that your father was a certain way, your mother was a certain tribe, when you walked through the door, you became kingdom tribe. And that means your conversations cannot look like where your father was. It is a possibility your father even knew what, never knew what you bumped into. And now they begin to wonder, what happened to this kid? Crazy. Let's disown them. The issue is not <laughs> you. The issue is ethnicity. They are warring against your ethnicity. They are not warring against your person. Because your person in itself can be broken. That is why culture will always follow people. Culture will always follow people. When the British came to Kenya, they colonized you. You started wearing suits. Even when it is hot on cash, I'm in a suit. God have mercy. I'm sweating, but culture. <laughs> Bishop, I wish I knew. <laughs> and it shall be witnessed. There will be result of the gospel to the nations, to these groups. In the political arena, when you show up, they say the kingdom has showed up. Mm, okay. It seems that was for me. When you show up in the business section, everyone shuts their door and they say, can you employ us? This is the evidence of kingdom reality. That men will lock up their doors and say, for this one time, I am not missing. Zacchaeus said, well, I am a tax collector. I am rich. One thing I have never known is what this guy could do with himself. So let me get my short self and find the tall tree so that the guy can see this short self of me. And just lock up my door to find this guy. The guy left his office. Amefunga milango. Yakeare. Just to have an encounter. This is what is meant to happen to each one of us. Men have to pave way for you. Even when you weren't planning to ask them. You say, uh, uh, cl clear the way, clear the way, clear the way. No, I'm not parking. I'm just uh, driving through. Oh, so I must be, must be. You weren't in the intention of parking. But the Ascari 
he had to clear the way. When I was arriving with the car, the Askari said, Hey, church, unenda kanisani? I said, mm-hmm. The guy saw the car turn, and he literally knew that I was entering church before he saw my face. This is what this is all about. That men recognize you before they even see you. It is not a crime to be respected. <laughs> it is a high privilege. Because you never made marketing for yourself. <laughs> you are not doing posters with your face. Look at me. I am called so and so. This is my biography. Guys will just hear about you like they heard about Solomon. And the queen of Sheba said, what, 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 what? I've heard of a guy. I've heard of a guy whose wisdom is not of men. It is of the gods. This lady had never seen the ninja. Never. Never. But the name went far. The guy's face. <laughs> The, the woman felt even very abusive if she didn't carry all the wood in her kingdom. The Bible says she carried all the special spices, the wood. She packed all the boats. She did everything to find one guy who she just heard of. The guy was speaking a language that was never of this world. And that marked the beginning of the queen of Sheba's life. She was rich. She was loaded. She went back seven times. I don't know how many times. Do. Seven times. Yeah, she went seven times back loaded. Her encounter, she thought she was sending gifts to have an encounter with Solomon. She went back with everything that Solomon could salvage in his kingdom. That could build her kingdom from Ethiopia up to India. So when men hear of you and they show up at the Caruso revolution, they came playing one note. They go back playing seven notes. You, you, let me help you understand this. You see when the Bible says the enemy will come in like one way and he will be dispersed seven ways. There are people who will come not because they are enemies, but because they came because they had you through one way. And they will discover their legs are being split. And they'll be asking, what happened to us? That woman, that guy, somehow called a disfiguring. I don't know whether they went for an operation. They added a third leg or something. Or else, but I feel I want to go to the east. I want to go to the west. I cannot find myself in the same location I was when I went. This is what happened. The queen of Sheba showed up. The woman went back a blessed woman. If she, if she left her kingdom calling herself Mimi Nitaji, she went back. If she went walking on a red carpet, I think that day they bought a white carpet. <laughs> Mama! Chafuatu! <laughs> we will put another one. It seems where you came from. You came with enough to make more carpets. When men encounter you, let them not go back empty. Because if they go back empty, you are a wasted product. And God is a businessman. He will not create anything that will not profit him. Tell your neighbor, God will not create anything that doesn't profit him. For a witness unto all nations, then, tell your neighbor, then, now look at your neighbor squarely in the eye. Look at them squarely in the eye and tell them, where is Nishida? <laughs> tell them. Some of you are afraid because you think they may throw a five-fold ministry on you. It is okay. Tell them. <laughs> You are not proclaiming. You are not producing manifestation. You are not even doing anything. And you're here, God is coming back soon. When did you know? When? When? Anarudi, Anarudi, Anarudi. Lini. 
Unalala, unapiga usingizi, unatoa sijui jasho. All those things. When is God coming? Tell me, show me, teach me. When you are still blacking out. That's why the Bible says he will come like a thief in the night. And some of us who came to church every day may probably miss him. And uh, I haven't really been started with it. <laughs> and then the end will come. Now let's go back to First Thessalonians, please. First Thessalonians, chapter three. Are you being blessed? Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone. This is Paul. Amen. We thought it good. Tell your neighbor, we thought it good. To be left at Athens alone. Now continue next verse. And St. Timotheus, who is Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer, tell your neighbor, fellow laborer, in the gospel of Christ, to establish you, I'm enjoying this. And to comfort you, that literal translation should be, and to exhort you concerning your faith. We send forth Timothy. How many here, <laughs> if you are very honest, your pastor could send you? To preach for him. Lift up your hands. You have gone in your pastor's name. Lift up your hands. Why? Because probably the guy has not found you of the same seed. It went quiet. Pastor, man, it went quiet. I hit the nail. <laughs> and we sent forth. Timothy, we sent. On Wednesday, I talked about the sent. The ones that have been sent are the ones that respond and cause the end of the age. Paul had raised Timothy so much to a point he could choose to stay in one city. And he knew very well that Timothy would do what Paul could do on a physical level. Can you ever be there for a minute and say, today, it's a card. I'll just sit. Worship leaders, we have that tendency. I'm in the star. Every Sunday, they are on the pulpit. By, by the time they choose them to give another person the mic, when Jesus gave them a nightmare, I don't know if that nightmare is. <laughs> say, what? Uh, today you are leading. Because somehow they dreamt their voice was being locked up in a bucket. Bishop says him he dreams about cartoons. <laughs> Others dream about money, and then as they are dreaming, they, they wake up and they start kicking the wardrobe to, Looking under the bed. <laughs> and they sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God. I like that. Not minister for God. We don't minister for God. We minister of God. Tell your neighbor, new kingdom reality. Because ministering for God makes you so much supreme than ministering of God making you influenced by God. I minister of God because it is God that quickeneth me to say the things I say. 
Because in my normal language, I could probably never give you the right explanation. So I, he says, Timothy was a minister of God. He was not a minister for God. How many ministers for God do we have here? You have refused to lift up your hands. If, if I hadn't explained, you would have seen. Why? Because it is God that does the work. The Bible says, it is God that worketh in me, both to will and to do, according to his good pleasure, Philippians. So who is working? And who is doing? Who is doing? God. He. So the only thing that is happening to you is influence. That is why you cannot perform on your timetable. You cannot dictate God's move based on your time. Mm. I think I would, I would preach this somewhere else because you guys in, you never got that. You cannot serve God based on your time. You're there. You pray. We don't even hear. One minute your prayer is over. Father, thank you. Other people know one scripture in the Bible and he wept. One paragraph. Ask them to mention some parts of the Bible. And Jesus wept. Period. Bible Meisha. That Bible is packed on the wardrobe as a decoration. Never open. And oh, we bless the Lord. Come on everybody. Lift Jesus up. We just made him weep. With your own scripture. He was a minister of God. The guy was so influenced by God that Timothy had lost his very self. His consciousness never existed except the consciousness of God. That's why Paul says, I speak to you in this language. And out of it, maybe a few words uh, in your language. But the rest are in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because now he comes and says in Galatians, I no longer live in this body. But Christ lives. The literal translation is not in me. He lives through me. So in the flesh I exist. But I'm sorry to make an announcement to you. I am being influenced by the guy himself. Paul, you're crazy. We can see you. We can touch you. We can even slap you. He says, go ahead. Fill all your cups you want. You can slap the back. You can lock me in a cell. You can put me on a boat. But the unfortunate thing, you're not taking me. You're helping Christ reach the next island. That is why even when the snake beat him, Christ was like, do you know that I silenced the storm? Do you know I, I made the waves to come? And you think when you bite this body, I am moved. The guys, the soldiers are with him and like, kind of man is this? That the snake has beaten him and he seemingly doesn't die. Well, because the healer was so much alive that poison could not go through the skin of the healer. Regardless that it punctured the skin of Paul. This is reality. Established minister of God and our four our co-laborer or fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. Now understand, and you must read it very clear. He does not say in the gospel about Christ. How many are ready to, to learn? You're ready to learn? Yeah. Bishop already ushered us into another realm of understanding. Now I'm here to push it to another level probably. Amen. He does not say in the gospel about Christ. Because the gospel about Christ is the testimony of Christ. It is what he did. 
how he did it. Where he did it. He died. He was buried. And he resurrected. That is his testimony. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. That is the testimony about Christ. When I come and start talking about the testimony of my brother, I'm going to talk about what he did in his life. But when I begin to talk about the gospel of my brother, it means it's a fundamental principle that made him fulfill what he did in his life. That made him a testimony. I hope I helped you. So the gospel of Christ is about what made Christ fulfill what gave him a testimony about what he did. So Timothy is being influenced by God to tell the people where he has been sent about God's issue which Christ came settling in his time of ministry. And this gospel does two things. Watch this. We send him to establish you. Glory to God. That when we are preaching the gospel of the kingdom, we are came sowing. So was an added word. Which I don't know if it exists in the Greek. Also grace. Kerusoing, I don't know if it exists. It doesn't. Okay. And we are keruso. <laughs> when every man, every woman, every boy, every girl is proclaiming the gospel, there are two things that first happen. Number one, you are established. Are you already seeing Matthew 24, verse 14? You are established. This establishment is katatizo in Greek. To mean one being positioned. So the gospel positions you to the place where you have access to everything of God. The reason why you are not seeing prosperity according to kingdom understanding, the issue is not that you never prayed, my brother. The issue is probably you're in the wrong market area. You get what I'm saying? You are in the wrong place. The gospel you hear will influence you to the right position. Bishop said it, I think, on Thursday, and you said... We are tired of tunavunja, tuna, we are breaking, we are binding, those things. <laughs> because the guy you are praying for a back just needs a bed. Right position, right results. Give the guy a bed and you have dealt with the back issue. Right position. The guy is sleeping on a one inch mattress. Expecting to walk out like a royal king. You will get out with serious migraines on your back. Wrong positioning. The gospel positions you where everything that God intends for you is in supply. That's what the Bible said. The blessings of God that is no sorrow. But do you know what? Ephesians, it says, Ephesians, I think, 1. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has, not who will. Who has, not who will. Who has, not who will. So, the sorrow you are having is not because the blessing is not in supply. The problem is you're in the wrong position where the supply is supposed to be available. Now, you're dealing with a supply problem. We call it in business supply de demand. Demand and supply. If you are positioned in Kirigiti, you would have already done a thing around. You have already observed which businesses are not in Kirigiti. Uh, they are babas, they are, they are pork joints, they are, but probably there is not a counseling office. 
some of you. I'm already giving some of you business ideas. There is every form. Mechanic store, timber center, plumber, electrician. But there is no one doing counseling. Right position will give you right supply and right demand. The gospel ushers you to the place where you're needed more than where you were before. And he preaches the gospel of Christ, which is the gospel of the kingdom. And because it is the good news of God, it begins to establish you. Number two, it begins to exhort you. That word exhort literally is to mean persuade or pers push you. Or bring you to a certain sense of commitment. So you get to be established. And now your commitments look like the establishment. And that position. Do you know why you keep on doing window shopping? <laughs> you keep on doing window shopping. We call it church shopping. As you're in this church, you're in the other church. You are in the church, in the church of another church. You, are in, you get what I'm saying? You are everywhere. If you landed on truth, real truth, I'm not meaning engineered truth. <laughs> the truth they have to force you to believe that it is true. You know, when you hear truth, you will know it is true. You, you, you know that instinct that happens. You will look at someone and you know, we are not you will see the guy sweating, stammering, scratching his nose, doing something. You will know this is a lie. Why? Because you have been given the spirit of discernment. The spirit of God to know the good and the evil. So you will know when you hear. He will establish a position you. And comfort you or exhort you or bring you to the commitment concerning your faith. Now, on Wednesday we talked about faith being a life. But if you read in Acts chapter 6, you will discover that faith is considered as the gospel. That's Acts chapter 6. Take me Acts chapter 6 verse 9. And I make it clear for you again. I want to use just a few minutes almost. Acts chapter 6, verse 9, I believe. Are you there? Then there arose a certain... Uh, um, take me to the place, and the gospel was being preached, and many increased in it, I believe. Uh, come on, let me hear you say Amen. Don't be quiet. Some of you feel this is invading your space. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't allow to be silent. Don't allow to be silent. Don't allow to be silent. Um, Acts chapter 6. Okay, continue, I think, to bring it to 8. Sorry? 7. Start from 7. And the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. What happened first? The word of God increased. And the men were obedient to the word which was the faith. So this gospel of the kingdom is the faith that men are obedient to. So it's so bad if you can spend a whole 24 hours and you don't have any word happening in you. How will you tell people about faith in you? How? Because your increase is based on the obedience to the word you paid attention to. Hello? 
Are we still here? So if you, you know, there's that word, obedience is better than? It's one thing to obey, it's another to sacrifice. We have a lot of sacrificial lambs in church. We don't have so many obedient sons in the church. They only show up because it is a sacrifice. On Ajua, I, I had to give up my time to show up here and do what? Who tells you we want your time? The Bible says, I can make the stones and the angels to worship me, and the, and the birds to worship me. Your time is nothing to God. He can turn the walls into a praise company. Obedience to God is a truth about revelation of God. I'm going to say that again. Obedience to God is a proof you have revelation of God. Sacrifice can be probably because you are drawing even your power from somewhere else. That's why the Bible says the angel of darkness has masqueraded as the angel of light. You, you think it is wrong? If the angel of darkness can show up like an angel of light, don't you think he can stand on a pulpit? Why? Because they are so much into sacrifice and into obedience. We bring the sacrifice of praise. No! Give me an obedience to God than a sacrifice of praise. Because if your sacrifice of praise is just a sacrifice than a revelation of praise, you are not any different from a sorcerer. Tell your neighbor prophet just said that. That is the good thing of being a prophet and an apostle. <laughs> I can operate on any dimension. Come as a postman, I come as a prophet. Amen. You will be no different than the, the soothsayers. The te terror card readers. I see in the next one week you may find a woman on the road. Then you'll find a goat next week. <laughs> Why? Because the guy is doing a sacrifice. They were obedient to the faith. They were obedient to the word. And the word began to increase them. I said in church about, I think, last month when we were doing uh, the month of faith, faith in faith, where I said it's not what you do that makes you rich. It's what you hear that makes you rich. Wisdom is not in performance. Wisdom is in understanding. The best of increase is not because you went and did. <laughs> the best of increase is because you understood how to do it. That regardless of the storm, you attained the right understanding to quit the rest when it went bad. That is why it is possible to start a business and lock up the next morning. The proverb says, in all you're getting, get wisdom. But above all, get understanding. Why? Because wisdom is the practical reality of understanding. We have so many wise men, but dumb men. They are wise and dumb. Have you ever seen that, that mixture of, of ice cream and hot tea? Or ice cream and yogurt? How does that even work? Fermented milk, frozen milk. What, what, what is that? You drink tea, then you drink soda. <laughs> there is a problem. They were obedient to the faith. Take us back to First Thessalonians. I need to finish and, and lay this down. First Thessalonians 3. Let's go back. Chop, 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 chop. Let's pray for our media guy. Amen. And St. Timothy, as our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in, in the gospel of Christ, which is the gospel of the kingdom. If you remember, Jesus says, for, for this reason I was sent to proclaim... For this reason, for this reason I was sent. For this reason I was sent. It's for this reason I was sent. Before I could liberate the bound, I will first have to proclaim the gospel. That's what he will say. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. Then he starts number one. To proclaim. To Caruso. Because if I don't Caruso, the prison doors will never open. The bound men will never walk free. So if all I want 
wanted to do is come and kick the doors open. There is a possibility Jesus would have broken his leg. With all his divine power. <laughs> he would never have gone through that door. To establish you and comfort you, exhort you, concerning your faith. Next verse. That no man should be moved by these afflictions. Which afflictions that we read in Matthew chapter 24 verse 3 over to verse 13. The wars of the nations. War against kings. Plagues, storms. And all these things that will happen on earth. Why? Because you need to understand the remedy to all the world's chaos is tied to what is being proclaimed. The remedy to all the chaos in the world is not governments borrowing from other governments that have resources. Because you haven't solved the matter. You have even worsened the issue. You have brought a whole country into debt. Which probably is what we are dealing with even now. That no man should be moved. Why? Because they are positioned. Number two, they are committed. Committed to what? To the gospel of the kingdom. And because they are in those two realities, they will not be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed. Tell your neighbor, I am appointed for affliction. Some of you refuse to say that. Prophet, what? No. I am supposed to be blessed. Maybe you're in another kingdom. Because this kingdom appoints you even for affliction. In other words, you don't even choose to get into the affliction. God chooses it for you. Mungu idea. Get me out of this problem. I don't know how the song is even right. <laughs> and yet, this is God's way of proving to the world that you have heard the gospel. That no man should be moved. Tell yourself, no man. No man that is established or committed can be moved by the affliction. So that means then God intended for the affliction. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> he's God. That's why he says, my ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts. You, you think this way. Yet, my thoughts lead you through the fire. You, you want a highly paved road smeared with gold. With everyone throwing mula. <laughs> and yet God is saying, ah, somewhere around the town, the road starts going like this. And you know the unfortunate thing, the more the damage the road is, the more time you spend on the road. It is not that your car cannot run fast. Try to drive it very fast. You leave the wheel there. The shock absorbers will stay there. So God will create an affliction where you have to go through it poly poly. Have you, ever, you see when you're driving a car and you know if you hit that hole, the bumper is staying there. God creates an affliction. Or he permits an affliction. For the proofing that you are established and you are committed. Number two. Either that affliction will establish you or cause you to be committed. So it is better to get committed and established before the affliction than to be established in the affliction. Because the teacher will be different. The Bible says if you do not be taught of the word, the world will teach you. 
Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we want to learn in the affliction. When God created the opportunity for us to learn when there was no affliction, we used to sing those songs in, in Uganda. It means we are sailing, we are sailing, and we are dancing. We are just enjoying. It's in stillness. Right when the storms rage. Then you will discover you are drinking water. If you can't swim, go and swim, learn how to swim now. <laughs> that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves. Tell your neighbor, for yourselves. No! That is very critical. That you must already even know that you are meant to go through affliction. It should not be even a mystery. But God, why? God, tell me why? Why? If you really know the word, you will know that you are supposed to go through the affliction. Stop asking God why. Because it's evidence even had not established. Mm, and you're a giver. God, why did you allow this to happen? God, why did you allow it? And he says, and you, yourselves. Munajua. You knew even the affliction, probably even dreamt about it at night and thought it was a nightmare. Yet God was announcing to you, aha, uh -huh, you remember the other thing I told you? Now it's starting tomorrow morning. And then it is just because you thought it was a nightmare. Nimepatan doto mbaya. God was sending you a signal to tell you, now ready yourself. And you, you are looking at it as a nightmare. So now the affliction begins. And you discover, oh, it wasn't a nightmare. Oh, it was a readiness. I wish I knew. I would have woken up, looked through the Bible, looked for the scriptures that tell me where I am going is working God's good, not my good. For you yourselves know that we, that we, I'm delighted because I always tell the guys in the ministry, I am ready for anything and any time. Any time. And when that day arrives, don't mourn. Slaughter the biggest cow. Because you yourselves know we are appointed for unto there, aren't you? Continue. Are you being blessed? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. For verily, truly, completely, so your knowledge is truth. What you know is truth about the affliction. There is no daintedness. Uh -uh. It's not Siju, it is black, it is gray. No, it is white, Kabisa, you know. For verily, when we were with you, when prophet was at the Keruso Kesha. He told you about these things. When Bishop Mzepa was in Kingdom Worship Center, he cautioned you. Now for verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass. And you know about it. The price of preaching the gospel. You want you want masape. In Uganda they call it masape. Mashere. Maybe it's in the wrong place. <laughs> Jesus says if you are of me you will be you will go through trials. And them, if you are of me, you must suffer tribulation. And it must come to pass. There is no option. That is a prophetic word. Paul is not just talking to the church in Thessalonians. No, no, no. no. Every word that is said is a foundation of another generation to come. The men that come before us lay foundations for us because their revelation of our, their time is a foundation for our time. And the revelation in our time is a foundation for the next generation coming after us. 
So by the time Paul is writing to Thessalonica, he knows that this is not only happening in Thessalonica. It must happen in Kirigiti. It must happen in Kenya. It must happen in Eldoret. It must happen, I don't care where. It must happen. Unless if you are the best sorcerer in Africa. <laughs> but even Lucy is right. The guy was slammed out of the house. <laughs> you just have to be something beyond Lucifer now. <laughs> to alter this. Next verse. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know in my affliction I am looking for men that have nurtured the faith. So in your affliction, your job is trying to find men that have arrived to the level of your faith and ready them for also their time of affliction. Like I'm doing now. Lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor is in vain. It will be very bad that you showed up for this Kesha and all you went back was WhatsApp and TikTok. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because whatever every preacher has said on this path will then be in vain. That means you are not operating under the influence of God. You are operating under another influence called the tempter, who is the devil. Mm -hmm. Next verse. I need to, I haven't even laid the first verse. Gosh. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us uh, and brought us the good tidings, the good news of your faith and your love, and that ye have good remembrance of us always. Tell your neighbor, I have memory of Prophet Ezra saying these things. And remembrance of us always. This is the response that the men that had Timothy gave to Timothy to send back to Paul. Desiring greatly to see us. As we also to see you. Next verse. Therefore brethren. We were also comforted. Or exhorted. We now became more committed to you. The reason why men of God are not giving their time to you. There is nothing you are even showing back. I hit that home. We were comforted over you in all of our affliction and distress by your faith. So even the man of God up here is going through some stuff. He may never tell it to you, but your faith could do much than your words. Look at your neighbor, your faith. This word, this gospel you had, can do much than the gifts you may probably bring first. Because the gifts you may give are a fruit of what you believe in faith. Next verse. For now we live, for now we live, if you stand uh, now we are made alive because you are steadfast in the Lord when we told you about him. Now we can, we now understand we are alive. 
Now you understand why I said, even you. Check yourself, you may be a dead man walking. Check yourself. If there are no people sending you any truth about what you did in their life. Because this is how you know that you are alive. You are producing effect. And the people you changed are sending back messages about how they are continuing in the faith that they had when you spoke. And now they can send back and say, Ha, Kumbe, I'm alive. I'm alive. This is what must happen to us. Principle number one. There must be a reality discovery. Mm, that was for me. There must be a reality discovery. Tell your neighbor, there must be a reality discovery. Take me to Proverbs 16.20. Proverbs 16.20. I need to finish this. We Proverbs 16.20. Kasta Pradibagaya. He that holdeth a matter wisely shall find good. And whosoever trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Give me the amplified value. I don't know if it's there. If it is not there, hope, uh, I can read it here. Shabrudiselahai. Masakatabahai. Sedebri. Manta ridebos satai. Proverbs sixteen twenty. Whoever gives thought to the word. Whoever commits to the word will discover good. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, it's a discovery. It is the word that points you to the treasure box. I expected you to be shouting already. <laughs> Whoever commits to the word will discover good. And blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. The wise heart is called discerning. And sweetness of speech increases persuasion. Now, let me help you understand this. That... Wisdom, and I wrote it down here, to be wise is to be an interpreter of divination and prophecy. To be wise is to be an interpreter of divine things and prophecy. Number two, to be wise is to produce understanding that leads to effective action. That is why it's important that we are wise. Because if you're not, you will not produce the results that bring effect. We are not being effective. We are not being influential. Why? What's there for? My people perish for lack. Literal translation, understanding. So you're perishing or you're losing position. Not because there is a great sorcerer in town. Not because um, the devil is haunting you. It is not because there is a witch with one tooth. And the tail of a rabbit bewitching you. It is because you lack understanding. God shows us in Hosea chapter 4 that the biggest devil in your life is lack of wisdom. Stop 
binding the guy. The guy lost a long time. The problem is you. Did I say this? Will you be offended? Are you mature enough to handle? Huh? You ready? <laughs> Let me spare that. <laughs> Verse 22. <laughs> Verse 22. <laughs> Good sense. Good understanding is a fountain of life. Hence, John chapter 6, verse 63. Take me there. Chop, 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 chop. John 6. He just said, good understanding, good sense, good knowledge, good uprightness up there is a fountain of life. So the reason why you're not living Apoju, my sense, sense, <laughs> It is the spirit. Oh, if I were you, I would have scrummed there. It is the spirit who gives life. So my understanding is the spirit of life. The flesh does me no benefit. No help at all. Because my sense is spiritual awakening. Why? Because now this is true. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Now understand, he never uses capital S to mean the Holy Spirit. He uses small s to mean understanding. The words I speak to you, they are revelation knowledge. And because they are revelation knowledge, they begin to create the life of that revelation. So your life is drawn from the revelation that you have. Number two, principle number two. What must happen to us is that we must have an understanding of the commission. Because discovering spiritual realities <laughs> are not for you to feel good. They are for you to affect the nations of the world. For you to be influential. Understanding the commission. Deuteronomy 31, 23. And I need to finish with this. Or something close to there. Just remaining with one principle point and we're done. Deuteronomy 31, 23. Deuteronomy 31, 23. If you're there, say amen. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. That amen is uh, very dull. Joy, are we still together? We are still together. You know, when I see my girl awake, I know God is really working. Because by eight, her lights have turned down. We all know that. <laughs> but if you see her awake, man, we give God the glory. Hallelujah. And the Lord commissioned Joshua. And the Lord commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun. Watch what he said. And he said, be strong and courageous. For you shall bring the people of Israel into the land that I swore to give them. I will be with you. So when God commissions you, you cease to operate on your own power. There is a strength that is generated in you. That it doesn't matter the Philistine that stands before you. 
It doesn't matter the Assyrian that comes against you. Because I am not drawing strength from myself. I'm drawing strength from the one that sent me. It is who you are connected to that will determine how you finish. It's who you are connected to that will determine the way you finish. If you're connected to the world, you will finish like the world. And oftentimes, the world knows how to finish you very badly. You think you are surviving. You think you are striving. Kumbe slowly ba slowly. It is a very big graveyard. But you can't find the walls. You think it is, I am digging a deep wall to build a great mansion. By the time you discover there is no ladder. I say, eh, how am I getting out of here? Then the guy comes and starts packing the dust back on you. <laughs> Be careful. But men that are connected to God walk with a certain strength. This is where the dunamis power comes in action. This is where you begin to see kairos happening in your life. Because God gives supply of the ones he sends. The, you know, the, where there is commission, there is grace. There is a grace to elevate you based on the commission. You want elevation? Understand the commission. You want elevation? Connect with the one of the commission. You want prosperity? Ka sa tarabosa. I will give you strength. Now, I want you to understand, Israel already had an army. One man had the strength of the whole army of Israel. By the time the army of Israel is coming to help Joshua, one man can do the job. God makes you sort what 10,000 soldiers could do in 40 years. And you show up and you say, I come in the name of the Lord. Now get out of here. You operate in the strength of Jehovah God. In the inside of me. Because I understand that he commissions, he supplies. If you're still thinking you need money because you started the ministry, you have to work it out. Maybe you started it yourself. I'm talking to you. Oh. Because everything of God, you will do it. With or without your power. He did not inquire from you how to save you. He needed a son. One day, one day, one day, one day, and the whole world was saved. You were never consulted. If he needed, he would have called for a 40 days prayer and fasting. Now, prayer! You see, people like Esther could do it because they were living in a time that wasn't of Christ. Uh -oh. So she could go for her three days. So that she can know how to approach the king. But I know the word that says you will go before kings and rulers. And you will have not to say a single word. Because the Holy Spirit will speak for you. I will go with you. Because I am your strength and I am your courage. You know when... You see, when Moses was giving complaints that I am but a stammer. I am but a stammer. That's why he says, no, just go and throw the stick. Don't say anything. Just say, I am has sent me. Drop the stick down. The stick will speak for me since you have said you are a stammer. You see, the more you keep on complaining to God about your deficiencies, he will show you, okay, show me your mobile phone. Go and throw it down. Then the thing will stand up and say, hey, 
Then the ruler will feel, what devil is this? Yet the guy is the devil. You, you know where you, <laughs> Belzebel begins to ask what Belzebel has shown up to do, deal with Belzebel. It's that bad. He gives you courage. <laughs> you see, understanding the commission will solve your issues. That's why he says, enter my rest. Hebrews 4. Enter my rest. Lest you become like your fathers, your forefathers, who refused to enter it. They were still stuck in their own performances. But when you walk into my rest, you will discover I do everything. And I supply everything. That is why if you really needed your consultation, you said I, you will supply your needs according to your riches and glory. The only thing it tells you, just touch as agreeing on earth. Period. Just touch as agreeing. Just touch. How does touching or agreeing supply? I thought I have to. No, 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 no. no. You see, God's ways are very they are very funny. They will blow your mind. You will be courageous and you will bring, you will bring the people, the people of Israel. You will bring, you thought, you thought Moses had seen the better side. There was a guy who says, no, 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 no. They are tall. Yeah, they are tall. You, I think he talked about it. They are tall. They are tall. The sons of Anak, they are tall. They are huge. Shut your mouth, Joshua and Caleb. Shut your mouth. Man, we have a deep revelation of our God. That when you look at the sons of Anak, they are ones of those that were kicked out. If our God could kick them out, he could sort them out on this land as well. Why? Because the Bible says, for heaven and the earth are the Lord's. So he decides who exists on it. Understanding the commission, it is a connection to the authorizer. If you do not have understanding of the commission, you will probably never have connection with the authorizer. You may have believed in him, but to work with him is another thing. <laughs> there is authority in the commission. Acts chapter 26 verse 12. Can you give me just about 15 minutes? Is that okay? <laughs> just 15 minutes. Finishing. Every preacher has four endings. Bishop asked for seven. <laughs> but I hope you're getting this. Because this is going to change how you perform out there. When the conference began, we said the church has lost effect because we are only perfect in the four corners of his walls. You are only good in the four corners of his walls. When you go out there, you just look like the world. When we look at the world and we look like, I look at you. What? It seems you, the right place you are to be is there, not even in here. This will change your setting. To back to the default setting. Because the, the setting you have is a wrong setting. Have you ever put Airtel, Internet, IPN, in Safaricom IPN? Do you think it will work? And you want to access Internet? I'm an IT engineer. How do you think it will work? www.web.airtel.co.kenya.ke And yet Safaricom is web.safcom dot net and you want to access airtel internet using safaricom internet provider net you will be there's something wrong with you you have a wrong setting in the right device nice iphone using techno <laughs> application <laughs> 
In this connection, say your neighbor, in this connection, in this connection, I journeyed to Damascus with the authority of that connection and the commission of the chief priest. Now, these guys were performing even regardless. The guy wasn't because he was good at just what he did. The guy had connection. You want to watch DSTV and you're putting a Go TV thing. Siju Izuku. Siju Yazam. I don't know which ones are here. And you're saying, I want to watch Super Sport. How? Stay with Satanta. <laughs> that is what is on whatever the Zuku channels and all that. Satanta, Siju Isibuka. You will never find Super Sport 3 there. In this connection, because I was connected, it was even easy for me to know where to go. Find the right connection, and you will know the right direction. Right connection, right direction. You are connected to the wrong people, expecting to reach Galilea. <laughs> You may end up in Gidurai 44. <laughs> Journey to Damascus with authority, with power, with confidence, because I was connected. And that connection gave me understanding of my commission. So I wasn't going to Damascus because I'm only connected. I am going to Damascus because I have a picture of the agenda. I knew what I was going to do there. I knew who I was going to meet there. I know what I was going to say there. I know what I was going to change there. Understanding the commission generates a character shift. Gener understanding the commission. My brother, you see, I preach. You can never find me in a club. My commission dictates my character. These guys always tell me I'm an Arsenal fan. But if you ask me for the last seven years which players we are bought in Arsenal, I promise you I will tell you a player's name that even retired. I am a die-hard Arsenal. I would have been like Luther, <laughs> who said, if you cut my heart, you'll even find the name of Jesus. That is why you celebrate Christmas. <laughs> the guy said, if you, if I, when I die, cut my heart, you'll find the name Jesus on my heart. Then the guy gave, I give Jesus my birthday. Now you find Christmas. You're, you're celebrating some ninja's birthday in Rome. <laughs> but he rever revered God with his day. You get what I'm saying? In those times. So here you are, Christmas, Shere. It was some guy's birthday born in the Roman Empire. <laughs> and so understanding the commission will give you a character shift. 2 Corinthians 2.17, and uh, we have just a few, just two, two scriptures, then you go out. Amen. 2 Corinthians 2, my media guy, you better do very first, because I'm now running it. 2 Corinthians 2.17, for we are not like so many, for we are not, tell your neighbor, I am not, I cannot be. It is illegal for me to be like the peddlers of God's word. The ones that take the word of God for granted. The ones that think they can read it on their time schedule. It is not a daily bread. It is not something that I can't afford. Not. It's very hard for me to be there. And you don't find me on the scripture. 
it's, it's, it's not that, because there is so much truth we haven't exhausted. Do not leave. Like so many, it's so unfortunate that the Bible even knows that there are so many and they are so less. <laughs> I pray you are one of the less, not one of the so many. Be one of the less that are not peddlers than one of the so many that are peddlers. For we are not like so many peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, men of complete truth and commitment to the word. As, read that, as what? So your sincerity in your Christian life is seen by how much you are connected to the commission. Stop telling us how good a Christian you are. Show us how good a Christian you are. Let me say that again. Stop telling us how good a Christian you are. Show us. Because sincerity is not because you said it. Sincerity is because you functioned by God. That is sincerity. In the sight of God, we now speak where? So, wait a minute. So, who is then speaking to God? For us. Put the pieces together. In the sight of God. When God looks down on a man. He does not see the man. He sees the one the man is in. And listens to the one that the man is in. So he says because we understand the commission is proof. That we are in Christ. Oh, yo. So that means uh, whatever we've been doing probably has a lot to do with the function. Point, principle number three, and we're done with this. Building your spiritual man. What we must do in this whole time for us to be effective out there. We now have discovered the reality. We now understand the commission. And now we begin to build our spiritual man. Based on all these levels of discovery. Jude chapter 1 verse 17 to 23. And we are done with the scripture. Uh, can Alex, where are you? Oh, you're on the keys. Who is on the keys today? Where are all the pianists? This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and th there is a deficiency with instrumentalists and worshipers. Let me tell you, and let me be prophetic. Pastor Amon, you're a worship leader. It is possible that instrumentalists may never even smell the gate of heaven. I'm a pianist. Do you know that the unfortunate part that instrumentalists never pay attention to the word? They never. That is why <laughs> she used to disturb me a lot. She said, I don't trust instrumentalists. Because <laughs> the word is being preached. <laughs> oh, they are out. You ask an instrumentalist to preach the gospel. Well, lie. God, we pray for a generation of men that have the heart like David. That kings would be delivered because a key was being pressed. Tell you I'm tired. 
That is why, Pastor Simon, I don't sit on those pianos because I don't want. It is better I preach. Because pianist instrumentalists have spoiled an identity. Just like how prophets could have messed up the office of prophecy. They know you to be a pianist, a guitarist, a drummer. You come with all the backlog of wickedness. Leave me with my pulpit. You play the wrong key, I'll chase you off. All these guys know. You press the wrong thing, you get off the piano. Simple and clear. We don't, we don't bargain. I can sit, play, worship, and the Holy Spirit will flow. Than having people that joke with God. We are in bad times. You want to do that? Go find another God. Is not here for jokes. Man, the world is in chaos. And the men that are supposed to change the atmosphere with their worship are busy. Now that's the prophet speaking. I even regret why I ever played for chameleon in my life. That is a name I will ever work to delete. That's why whether you stand and hear me preach for the next four hours, endure. Endure. Pambananat. Namin. Let me tell you. The Bible says there is worship in heaven. So it doesn't matter whether your fingers will break or never break. You will never move God because you know how to play seven keys. You will never. Ah! You come out of here and you have every devil admiring you. And then you go home, you can't even pray. You sleep like a lion that sleeps for 21 hours and hands for only four hours. Lazy! Then you come, oh, the anointing. Then. And I chesa, chesa, chesa. Then after that, my people, elf na elf. That's why, let me tell you, you guys that are in here, I pray grace over you. That you work to delete. If there was a generation that came that was known as worshippers that are good on the pulpit but dead in the word, stop singing and grow in the word. Let me say that again. If you can't preach, I have so far spoken how many scriptures from the time I began speaking, and they are not on the screen. I ask you to give two scriptures, you will be sweating plasma. Thomas. <laughs> and here you say, Tuna kwa budu, tuna kwa budu. You think God is moved because you are singing? God himself is worship. There is nothing in your capacity that you can do that can move God. Not until his word is moving him from within you. So if the word is not in you, stop singing. Save yourself the burden. Because you see, the world is waiting for influencers. It's not waiting for jokers. Let the world joke, not you. These equipments, I came out of a coma six months, and one week I was playing a piano. Six months in a coma. Two death certificates. And you come and you do my nyanga here. Go to that religious church. Not, not, not kingdom reality. No. Tell your neighbor, no. I cannot be one of them. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 
building your spiritual man. Jude chapter 1 verse 17. But you must remember, beloved, the prediction of the apostle. I want you to remember every word I've said. Pastor Amon, don't be shocked when all your team members that you one time brought here will be looking at you asking for a cup of water. Yet they played on every worship experience you ever did in your life of ministry. Mark my words. I'm not a man who speaks such words in vain. And I rarely speak, you know that. Remember, beloved, I'm speaking with love. The Bible says, he, the father loves, he rebukes. A wise man is receptive to rebuke. A fool always looks. If you're wise, receive the rebuke. Beloved, the prediction of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. They said to you, God, I now understand why this anger came. In the last time, they will be scoffers, jokers, funny, funny men, following their own ungodly passions. You know, playing these things is a passion. It can be godly or it can be ungodly. The only way it is godly, when the word is causing you to play it. When it is ungodly, when it is based on skill, the experience, they will be following. In other words, the only thing that persuades them is their ungodly passion. Next verse. Thank God today, Alex, you're on the projector because you're lucky you're not on the piano. I usually do this with my guys. So I'm sorry you're being victims. It is these. It is these guys that are causing the division. Worldly people. Next line. Devoid of the spirit. Next line. But you beloved. Building yourself up. In your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Continue. Keep yourselves. In the love of God. Waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Now wait a minute. I thought the writer of Jude already understood that Jesus supplied eternal life. What is then this other eternal life? You could be saved but a scoffer. You are walking in a provision of life. You are not walking in eternal life. Because eternal life alters your performance. God help me here. Take me to the next verse. I need to finish this. And have mercy of those who doubt. It is better to have a man that doubts than a man that does nothing. It is better to have a man that doubts than a man that does literally nothing to even commit to spiritual truth. Run away from a man that even does not show interest in spiritual stuff. Better to have one that doubts. But I have a question. I, this was said, but I read this, but it hasn't yet sunk. Better to have a man that doubts than a man that does not commit at all. Next verse. 
save others by snatching, snatching, snatching them. Who is saving? Who is saving? Who is saving? Bible scholars here. Who is saving? Is it Jesus? Who is saving? Because Jesus did it for you, but now you have to do it for another. Saving others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment. In other words, the body. Hate the body to a point that whatever it passionates, it is stained by the flesh. There is a garment that is stained by the flesh. And when we talk about garment, it's the things that tend to cover you. Because they are fleshly. They tend to give you a certain coating that feels like a protection. But in the reality, they are staining you. Do you think they are working good? Check yourself clearly. You may be having spots and wrinkles and you didn't know. Colossians 2, 6, we finish with that scripture and we're done. We pray. Please play something now. I'm done. Colossians 2, 6. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, as you receive Christ Jesus, as you received Christ Jesus, as you received Christ Jesus, the Lord, the Omega, the Omnipotent, the Omnipresent, the Omnificent, as you received Jesus as the Lord and ruler of your life, so walk in him. Do not walk by him. Or do not walk alongside him. Walk in him. In other words, every step he makes, you make. Every word he says, you say. Every commitment he commits to, you commit to. This is how we know you received Christ. Next verse. Rooted and built up. God, that's why we need men and women that are not rooted in themselves, that are not rooted in their desires, that are not rooted in their accomplishments, they are not rooted in their positions and titles on earth, but they are rooted in you, and they are rooted in the word that makes you Jehovah, rooted in him, and positioned in the faith. Functioning by the virtue of faith. Just as you were taught. That means if there is absence of teaching. There is no effect of rooting you. If you are not a person that is teachable. Stop believing that you will ever be grounded. Let me say that again. If you're not a person that is teachable, forget about being grounded. Forget. Forget it. Because I can read that it is about rooting and establishment based on a teaching, abounding in the teaching that you are taught with thanksgiving. So you receive the word with thanksgiving in your heart. You receive the word with a gratitude. Because you know it is working wonders for you and in you. That is why, Pastor Amon, I pray that you raise up men. You as a worship leader, I've known you I don't know how many years now. But long way back, we've been through stuff together. My prayer is that you raise men that are not good instrumentalists, but good word men. 
because they will be on this platform. And a song will come up that was because we're going to take Holy Communion. And you see, it's very intentional that you are the one that stayed. The significance of the blood that was shed for you is not only to cleanse you from your sins, but to cleanse you from your mentalities. So I want you to open your mouth, church, with this understanding from Wednesday all through this Kesha. Word has been preached. Truth has been dispensed. The rest is left to you. The rest is left to you. I said redemption is a response of a reception. Now open your mouth and begin to pray. If you couldn't pray in the Holy Ghost, begin to open your mouth and say, God, fill me with the language of sweetness. Manta parigazi de bogozi laha. Zele man telebosaya. Father, we pray that there is a discovery of realities. Father, we pray that every man and woman in this room will walk in a discovery of kingdom realities. Father, that there will be something greater than what they could see. Your word says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. So, Father, we seek after the kingdom. Because everything else doesn't matter. If kingdom is not discovered. Father we pray that there may be discoveries of your reality. Father we pray. That you may bring us into an understanding. Of the commission. Give us enlightenment. In the commission. Because we know. There is authority. Given unto men. That operates. By the authority and the connection of the commission. So Father, I pray for every man and woman. And those watching us online. The spirit of a living God. They may begin to operate in their ministries and vocations. As given to them by the Holy Spirit. For Ephesians tells us, to some he gave apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the edification and for the equipping, for the working of ministry. Father made everyone in this room begin to walk in that function they are discovering their callings they are discovering their giftings they are discovering their appointments father that even in the affliction great is flowing out of them father we refuse to be silent father we refuse to be silent we refuse to be silent. We refuse to be ordinary people. We refuse to be ordinary people. We cannot operate like the world. Because unto you, there is authority. Unto you, there is every heavenly supply. Because we are your workmanship in Christ Jesus. Created for good works. It is not for our works. It is not for our performances. It is not for our deeds. It is not for how they just call us. It is not for our accolades. 
Father, it is about you. It is about you. It is about you. So we speak to every man, every woman. Callings are being discovered. Appointments are being discovered. In the storm. In the storm. In the storm. You are walking great and mighty. Come on church. Come on church. If you can pray, pray. If you can pray, pray. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. And begin to declare these things. Declare these things. Declare these things. And Father, by the power of your word, by the authority of your word, by the integrity of your word, Father, build us up. Build us up from the inside out. From the inside out. Build the spirit man that he takes dominion and he begins to influence the natural man. Build us up. Build us up. We we'll speak grace. We we'll speak grace to every woman and every man. We we'll speak grace to those bonds. We we'll speak grace to those ears, to those tumors, fibroids, we come against you by the integrity of the word, disease and affliction, we come against you by the integrity of the word, deaf and dumbness, every deaf and dumb spirit, we come against you by the integrity of the word father your word has been released your word has been spoken your word has been dispensed now do what only your word can do heal every disease heal every disease heal every disease heal every disease we come against craziness we come against insanity we come against every form of demonic disposition in the lives of men in the name of jesus we rebuke cancer we rebuke breast cancer we rebuke lung cancer we rebuke cancer of the pancreas we rebuke lung cancer of the kidneys we rebuke every form of cancer in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let the word, let the word. Father, we believe. Father, we believe in the word that says, they that believe and have been baptized in this word, in this gospel, Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders shall follow them. So Father, I pray for everyone that has received this word and everyone that has believed on the word that has come out of my mouth as your messenger. Father, made signs and wonders begin to walk up we speak legs to be stretched if you're watching and there's something you couldn't do this is the time to exercise the faith of god exercise the faith of christ exercise the faith of christ because action is the corresponding factor of faith action is the corresponding factor of faith what you speak corresponds to faith so if you came with a disease and illness i want you to exercise check it 
if you're watching us live check that place that was happy because I believe that the word of God has power has power to do what no man could do what no physician could do what no scientist could do the word of God has power to do it in the name of Jesus now I'm going to ask we deliver the Holy Communion elements I want us to deliver the Holy Communion elements now now I don't want you to treat this act like a religious act because the re religious men do it that way but I want you to understand that when he shed his blood and his body was broken is that you may be made complete let me say that again he shed his blood his body broken that there may be a completeness in you but understand this when he says do it in remembrance of me he's not saying just remember me because I was stabbed and pierced but remember what I did and paid for you it's the payment into the life that is very important than the act. His body was broken. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace. The price that we were to, be, to pay. He paid it in full. So that we can walk in the fullness of life. So the remembrance in Holy Communion is to bring you to the knowledge of the spiritual life you have received. It is not just to remember the breaking and the bleeding. Because if you checked on Calvary Cross today, there is no blood there. His blood is not on the Calvary Cross. As a matter of fact, you may not even find the tree that he was hanged on. But there is a place you remember him at. And the place you remember him at is at the place you have arrived. Which is the spirit man in you. So when we take the Holy Communion, we drink the, the blood, we eat the body. What we are doing, we are making an announcement that we are so much aware that we are alive in the spirit than we are in the flesh. The religious men will tell you to remember that he died. But I'm here to tell you the kingdom says, I take this because I have seen him. That's why Paul says, you've heard we preach that he died as it was written in the scripture. He was buried as it was written in the scripture. And he rose as it was written in the scripture. But the place we never preach and he was seen. When Jesus is asking us to break the body and the one, the blood, is that we may have an understanding of that he was sin. So our taking and breaking in this holy communion is proof that we have seen him and we are of him in the heavenly places. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly places now we are making the announcement to our fleshly man that I'm reminding you that the blood that flows in my body is not the blood that is in the cutaneous tissues it is the blood of Christ who is the anointing and the anointed one so the blood I am taking is the anointing I am drinking the anointing and I am feeding on revelation. This is the kingdom understanding of Holy Communion. We are understanding that we are flowing in spiritual dimensions. We are full of spiritual DNA. 
you can check my blood and probably it may look like my father's gene structure. But the reality is that is because of a microscope. But if you really looked deeper, you will discover that what flows in me is sheteka bosi lekaha. There is an anointing that changes atmospheres. As you take this blood, I pray that you get more united, more rooted into spiritual life. That the blood that will flow in your body will contend with anything that is not spiritual. This covenant that you have walked into will contend with anything that does not line up with spirituality of kingdom in you. The blood is sealing the awakening of kingdom in you. At this very hour, Jesus was just descending into Gehenna. To preach to the souls that had been held captive. He was in a dissension to preach in Gain. Because he did it on earth. He had to complete it also in hell. The Bible says and when he got there. He broke loose of hell's gates. And he ushered men. The Judas Iscariots. All the guys of the old. He preached to them and the Bible says hell was left empty. We are celebrating the victory that we have received that the flesh could not give us. So I want you to walk. Come pick a piece of this. Get a cup. I'm going to ask, I don't know if we are passing it over or they're coming to take it. But as we are doing this, please pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, the glory of your presence. We, your people, give you reverence by so arise to your rest. And be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace. Kevin, can you play that song? Where are you? Because this is very... This is very critical. Now, I don't want you to just be quiet. You guys, you better learn how to work atmosphere. Because, you, you, you know, if, if God is with the apostle, you're going to have a problem. Hello? Work the atmosphere for yourself. Learn to walk the atmosphere. Pray. Don't just look, guys. When the devil will be hitting at your door, I will not be there. Bishop Sami Musefa will not be there. Reverend Grace will not be there. So learn to stir up the atmosphere for yourself. Come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. And this is a point where you walk in spiritual truth. This is a point where you walk into spiritual truth. This is the point where we know how much you say of God you know. If you can't give God the best of you. Give God the best of your worship. When I look at you. Some of you probably, your relatives passed on. Maybe you could have been dead yesterday at 8 p.m. And 
yet you have nothing to tell God. You literally have nothing to tell God. There is a dumb man that wants to speak and just tell God, if only I can speak, if only I can say a word, and you that has the gift, Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Stop whispering, stop whispering. Kingdom truth, men, you explored in prayer. Access the spiritual man from within. Access the spiritual deposits of God from within. Seal the spiritual life in you completely. Seal it completely. Seal it completely for me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want to hear some victorious men pray. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give it five minutes. Give it five minutes. Give it five minutes. We are done. Give it five minutes. Give it five minutes. Give God the best of that worship. Give God the best of that reverence. Because if I ever told you to go to a cross, and die you would probably stone me it was never an easy price that he paid for us who is man that you are mindful of him what manner of love is this that a man would shed his blood that would shed what kind of love is this what kind of love is this? This is how you remember. This is how you remember. By exercising your spiritual positioning. This is how you remember. The sacrifice. By doing what only spiritual men can do. Two minutes to go. Two minutes to go. Push it, push it, push it. Push it, push it, push it. Push it, push it. Masata paribo kusitila. Yete le mande bahaya. Masukete bahaya. Rebano sataya. Kasekete makusileha. Machete cosette le gadibosa. Le geze ma cosette. Your family must know there is something different that happened to you when you left Caruso Kesha. Don't allow to go back and they call you the same name. That prayerless girl. That prayerless boy. Don't allow the visitation of God to pass you because you are too comfortable. Don't allow one minute to go. One minute to go. Take it higher. Take it higher. Nakabako sataya. Masata la maka de bosa. Riga de bosa taya. Yeah, 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 yeah,
That's a second. 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 I am Andos Otolo Baha. Mr. Ketebosa. Yerebo Gosotolo Mosataya. Yele Mosotoya. Yene Mandela Bos. And he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave thanks. And he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said, This is my body. It is a sign of the new life, the new life that flows in us, the new blood that streams through our veins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we take this cup, may we remember that the life that dwells in us, the blood that flows in us, is the life of the Spirit. Now take the cup. And he got the bread and he broke it. And he said, This is my body. I lay it down as a sign. When you eat of it, you become a new man. Something else changes in you. It looks like a piece of bread, but the significance is you are dying in the flesh and coming alive in the word. Now, as you eat it, may you be born of the word. May you be bathed in the word. May your nature, your stature, your virtue be a word nature. Father, we bless this bread. And we thank you. Because we have been changed into the very image of God. Through Christ Jesus. You can eat the bread. Now begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him now. Thank him. 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 Come on, thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Woo! What great joy to be sons of God. What great joy.
She